It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God. Schultze, we are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Um, where the ad? We got pre roll? Oh, shit. Do we have a pre? Do we have a pre? No. Oh, no, 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 no pre. Don't worry about going, it. Right. Yeah. Uh, we here, man. We back for another week of Brilliant Idiots. We in the studio. Yeah. Um, did you tell everybody? Yeah. Y'all told yeah, Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Did you wait? Did you tell everybody? No, nah, I didn't tell nobody. No, I mean, you told them I was pregnant. That's what you told them. Yes, but I was talking about with my the girls. Netflix special. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. You're an asshole. First of all, I don't show up to one goddamn episode, right? My girl's DMs is flooded. My DMs are flooded. I got mad baby emojis in it. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? My girl texts me. She goes, Andrew. I go, what's up? She goes, are we pregnant? I go, I don't think so. And then all of a sudden I text, I text uh, the group chat with you. And I'm like, yo, what, what is going on with this pregnancy shit? And then you said, I used a metaphor yes. that you're having a child. I listened to the episode. The beginning of the episode goes like this. Well, Andrew's pregnant. It, yes. That's not a all. metaphor, Charla. But why would Andrew be pregnant? Because now, you know, progressive people, <laughs> yeah. the men and the woman are both oh pregnant with that God. stupid Come shit. Come on, Low man. key, that's disrespectful to women. Imagine, like, you got to carry this baby and nourish this baby for nine months, and your husband also gets to be like, yeah, I'm pregnant. Yes, if I if Andrew was really having a baby and it was public, I'd be like, Andrew and his fiance are expecting a baby. I said, Andrew's pregnant. Women say that all the time, though. Huh? First of all, when do people start taking black people literal? That's what I was saying. Come on, man. So if I say right now, we cooking, we cooking, you don't see no pots, you don't see no pans. Nah, there's a black person cooking somewhere, dude. I got, there's a black person cooking somewhere. I got to film. I'm saying. Anyway. Like, we call people thirsty when they're not hydrated. I mean, when they're already hydrated. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck, man? Uh, positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. Uh, positively brilliant. Let's start with positively brilliant, bro. The brilliant idiots, we had a pretty good week. We had a great week. We had a pretty I, good I, I, week. Positively brilliant is fucking Netflix. You know what I mean? Um, more so Andrew Schultz. And the reason I say more so Andrew Schultz is because I really get a rush watching my people prosper. But watching Andrew prosper the way he prospered, mm. doing it his own way. We just had this conversation last week on the podcast. I was talking about the lever or maybe when it was mouse was here i don't remember but it's the leverage that this generation has that they may not know they have mm. cuz they can build shit on their own and only thing a netflix can do is partner with you mm. they can't mm. do anything else mm -hmm. i bet you the conversation was totally different than most people who go trying to shop something yeah it was a, it was a, i think it was different now again i don't know you know because i haven't dealt with them coming from a different position as no, well. no 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 be, yeah. be a little spicy with okay that. go go i don't go. know because i don't come at motherfuckers begging that's true i didn't know how to do it i didn't know i didn't know what to say i wasn't using metaphors but now that we're using metaphors <laughs> <laughs> Your boy was hydrated. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know he was. You was not thirsty. That's right. No you thirst. were very hydrated. No thirst. You went to Netflix very hydrated. They couldn't even offer you a drink. That's right. that's true. They couldn't even offer you a drink. They looking at your big ass jug of water and they was like, "Shit, how can we sip on that?" Thank you. Imagine that. No, that's literally what it is. Mm -hmm. You got a big jug of water. Mm -hmm. You over there drinking, drinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They come to you like. Can I pay you for a so, sip of that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you can have a that's, sip. That's it. it. You can get a yeah, sip. I'll yeah. pour you a cup. <laughs> I'm not going to pay you. The, I'm not going to give you the whole bottle. But I'll pour you a cup. I'll give I'll, you a cup I'll of pour, the sauce. I'll, I'll pour him a bottle, bro. I ain't going for it. I put, a lot, of, I put a lot of work into that motherfucker right there. And a but, and, no, no. But yeah. you put a lot of work into all your shit. Yeah. You right. I've watched you. All them, those YouTube clips. Yeah. Andrew, them shit take time. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. put a lot of work in, you would have put a lot of work into it regardless. Yeah. And a team, bro. Like, I know I'm going to get the credit for this. I said this on Flagrant, obviously, because I'm, you know, the person delivering it. But, you know, shouts to Alex Media. Alex Media directed it, you know, first. Big Alex. Directorial debut is on Netflix. That's, That's pretty good, good, man. All this verbal abuse is paid off. This is what it's about, bro. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come serious. That's why you got to stay down. Yeah. You know what I mean? You think somebody's being hard on you, you know, just because they're an asshole. No, they're being hard on you because they see something in you that you may not see in yourself. Now you got to fucking direct this credit on Netflix. There we go. Shout out to my boy Mark Gagnon, man. And uh, Mark co-created with me. He wrote with me. And uh, shout out to Robbie Slovic. He wrote on it as well. An FAL guy. And there's a lot of other people. Dove in the room. That's my first friend 
mine in in college. Uh, he uh, executive produced it as well. Dope. You know, and uh, there's a lot of people behind the scenes. Everybody as well. eats. Everybody eats. Listen. I mean, that is true. Like you know, I think that's something that's true about both of us. Is like the people around us are always going to eat as long as you ride. And you work your fucking ass off. I can only create opportunities for people That's around it. me. They got to step into those opportunities. But the people that do, they tend to thrive, man. You really got to ask yourself that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, that's what you're supposed to do. When you're in a position, you're supposed to make sure everybody around you prospers. Because there's always yeah. something for you to do. Yeah. If you're sitting around people and you starving, man. Yo, but and that, it's like maybe you're man. not providing nothing. That's another thing. It's a lot of people mm. are just like you're friends with the dude that's popping. And then you're like, but where's mine? It's like, well, yeah, what are you doing? What do you do? <laughs> You thought you were just going to hang out there, roll blunts, and then be a millionaire? Absolutely. And you don't even roll blunts, You probably. don't even roll blunts, bro. Yeah, but you're always smoking. Yeah. Yo, why the fuck are you so high all the time? Yeah. Who are you smoking with? And so, it's like, it's so simple, but a lot of people I don't think get it. It's like, you can give people opportunities, but they got to step in and fill those shoes, Fill those shoes, man. I'm, I, yo, I went to, because I, I didn't even know Netflix did this. I saw everybody posting it. So I went to Netflix to type in show stays America. I didn't know that they that they do that before a show comes out. Oh up. yeah, so they got like a splash page up. Matter of fact, we're gonna give them a little something sexy. Maybe by the time this is up, there's gonna be something new over there. But but yeah, what I wanna do is I wanna break the record for most uh, add to your watch list. I think you're gonna do it. Um, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna do crazy numbers only because you're, you've already conditioned people. Mm. Like as people are excited internet. for it. Yeah, They're like, absolutely, finally, yeah. absolutely. But people are conditioned for it. They go to your YouTube page already. Right. They go to your Instagram. So they're absolutely going to Netflix. I went to that shit, man. I stared at that shit. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Like that shit almost. That shit. I'm, I'm getting sensitive in my old age. That shit was like. I was like, wow, teary eyed. Like good, man. Uh, like I was looking at the shit with man. the flames, and I clicked on. I'm like. That's fucking Andrew, yo. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah what man. I'm saying? Hey, bro. That's you know what we you say, man. It. You earned it. That's it. You man. earned it. Nothing given. Not, nothing fucking given. Facts, man. You earned it. My, nothing fucking given. A buddy of mine texts me. He goes, um, he goes, you played the game on difficult. No. And, and what? You didn't even play the game. Ah. You didn't even play the game. Yeah. Now, now, now when you were playing the game, the industry was difficult. Right. That's right, what made you right. say, man, fuck this shit. I'm going to go start my own. Yeah, yeah. The way that I've always looked at things and like uh, it was... You could be next to the thing that's hot and then hope they're charitable with the heat, right? In terms of like, um, you know, like uh, go to all these like parties and shit like that and like go to these like comedy festivals and like kiss up to every single exec there mm -hmm. and hope by kissing up that they're going to give continue to give you these opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could create the thing that has the heat and then other people will want to be doing business with you. That's because right. They see it. And then. That was the whole transition, and obviously being with you and, and you know starting this with you was something that made me realize like the power that goes into that, and then continuing to do you know flagrant and putting out the YouTube clips and even the special. I was like, oh shit, you don't have to siphon off someone else's heat. You could create your own fucking Absolutely. heat, and then people want to do business with you. So I was like, that's the that's the life I want to have. I don't want to live off charity, man. I want to create my own shit and you know be charitable to others. So that was. Yeah. But the crazy thing is when Schultz when when it hits for Schultz because it's going to hit. When it hits for Schultz, it's gonna be so massive because it's like watching. I always compare it to rap, right? Like, mm. you, I'd rather be Jay Z mm -hmm. or Ti, mm -hmm. right? Because their first projects came out, didn't do great commercially, but they were critically acclaimed, right? People mm. fucked with them, but they just built. You just watched, mm. you know, Jay Z especially. You just watched the progression. Yeah. Next album, it was it was good. Then yeah. and commercial, right? Commercial success. Next album was great. And commercial success, and then he just kept building, 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 building. I'd rather have that than come out the gate red hot, 10 million records sold the first album. And then next album. Because there, there's nowhere to go Nothing. from there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? When somebody watches your career trajectory and they're like, yo, I remember Andrew from Guy Code. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I remember Andrew from doing the Brilliant Names podcast. Oh, yeah, I've been to Andrew's stand up before. Oh, Andrew from Flagrant. Mm. Then, it, then, oh, Andrew doing the YouTube videos. Oh, shit, Andrew got a Netflix special. Now, mm. those people that's been riding with you, those new folks that's gonna come on because of the Netflix special, mm -hmm. like yo, you know Andrew Schultz. The fuck, you just getting on shows? Yeah, yeah. yeah you just yeah. getting on Hezekiah Walker? <laughs> <laughs> you just getting on the Toxic Crusader? The Toxic come on, Crusader. yo, middle aged Hezzy was so funny when you put that in the caption. Uh, Matt, but, but middle aged Hezzy would would you rather so have gotten true. it seven years ago or getting it right now? Nah, getting it right now. The yep. way that we got it, man, is is super satisfying. But also, I gotta say, like. Getting it, and I don't care if it sounds contrived, but like get, once you have the love of the people, 
there's not any really extra validation from like the love of the network. You yeah. Know what I mean? Like doing this opportunity allows me to get to more people. That's you right. Know? But I don't value it more than I valued all the people who fuck with me when we were putting stuff up on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Like that to me is the ultimate. So in a weird way, I've been seeing the reaction and like people are really personalizing the, the win as they should because there's all these people who have been sharing my shit for fucking years and telling all their friends, yo, this kid's the truth, blah, blah, mm -hmm, blah. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the commercial start to catch up with the community, all of a sudden, I think for all those people who built the community, we're like, see, I was right. Yeah. I knew I yeah. was right. I trusted my guts. So. And, and man, the industry's in trouble simply because they have no choice but to start treating motherfuckers fair. Mm. <laughs> you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, they, they have no choice at this point. Like, I, I love what Tiffany Haddish did. I thought that was positively brilliant. Mm. Telling the Grammys, like, yo, I'm not hosting this shit for free. <laughs> yeah. You don't want, you want me to, you don't, you don't want to pay me. Yeah. You don't want to provide hair and makeup all wardrobe? Yeah. What the fuck do you think I am? I'm out. I'm, I mean, she don't got hair. Exactly. <laughs> she, <laughs> but, she, might, she might need a haircut. You know what I'm saying? True, yeah, but yeah. it's just like the fact that she's able to even say that is great. without even worrying about, hey, man, what if they don't nominate you for any Grammys? I mean, she's yeah. nominated this year for her, her stand-up special on Netflix, Black Mitzvah. But the fact that she's not even concerned about it. Yeah. Because she's, she's in a space where she's good. Yeah. The fuck if you... You getting such and such amount of money for a movie. You got partnerships over here, partnerships over there. What the fuck are you going to show up for free for the look? I love the energy of that. I love the energy like you're already satisfied. Like you don't need these motherfuckers, these like execs or whatever to love you. You don't need like the industry to love you. You need to be invited to the parties in the hills. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm yeah. good with my people. I'm good where I am financially. I could take care of my family. I don't need anything else. So if you're going to provide something else, it's got to be the right opportunity. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and not even complaining about it. Just like I'm not yeah. doing it. I'm not doing it. I, I felt insulted. Yeah. I'm out. Yo, we got um, we got a little uh, Charlotte. You you're in the the special a little bit. Really? Yeah, man. Just don't put me in the predators part. I saw no, that no. guy. <laughs> don't, that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, all I all I'll say is this. I'll say this when it comes out. Watch. Uh, well, one Charlotte, you pop up in some pictures that I think are quite fun. The thing is racked with jokes. I've seen all of our pieces, but a lot of people don't notice that like every piece has like a little Easter egg in it. Every like joke often in the picture there's another little thing like and we try to hide a lot of little things throughout the special but uh yeah charlotte you pop up in some pics you'll Man, see that i can't wait and also i'll say one last thing this is all i say because i can't say too much but like uh without giving it away uh watch uh it to the end yeah. Oh, on some Marvel movie shit? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. I so wait, don't know. wait, 12, 17 or 12, 14? 12, 17. 12, 12 17. 17. So that's yeah, next, yeah. next Thursday? Like next Thursday, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That shit right We're around the corner. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I love, too. Like, when you announce something, I, I literally was just complaining about this. When you announce something, I want to see that shit out within the two weeks. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I was saying we should announce the day of. And, and it's like on, on some level, I do understand that. And then on some level, I also think the anticipation is fun too, like getting everybody excited about it. It also gives us some time to get all of our shit ready in case we want to put like assets out and, you know, I, really gear it up. I, I, I could have I done it either way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, we need, we, I would have rather y'all announced it now so we could shit on people a little bit on this podcast. <laughs> That's all. You know what I mean? It's cool. And it, humbly. That's just humbly, It's bro. humbly. And, it's, and by the way, we don't even have to say anything. The proof is in the pudding. That's it, man. That's it, man. Just go check it out. Come on, man. The proof is in the pill, the pudding. If you build it, they will come. That's it. Simple as that. If you build it, they will come. Simple man. as That's, that. We put a lot of work into this, man. For real, though, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Mark. Wait. Robbie, Effie. Like, I'm telling you, the last three months, the last month, bro, we we're, we're working 100 hours a week minimum. The last two weeks, we were sleeping maybe two hours a night. Like you were the, pregnant. We were pregnant, bro. That's were, right. Yo, <laughs> it literally, we was, we was pregnant, bro. I was fucking snorting Adderall just to stay up. Really? Dude. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> dude, it was, because I ran out of energy, bro. I'm 37 years old, yeah, man. Yeah, I can't yeah, stay yeah. up like these fucking kids, bro. So I'm Did like. Did you put a lot of pressure on yourself? Yo, it wasn't, it wasn't pressure as much as like, I'm. I'm like looking at it like a, a masterpiece, man. And I'm and I'm I have the opportunity. This is what it is. It's like, you know when you know how great something can mm -hmm. be? Like, I'm okay if I create something that's a seven and I make it a seven. I'm not okay if I create something that is a 10 and it comes out as an eight. 
Mm. So it has to be as good as it can mm. be. And I knew we had the opportunity to create a masterpiece. And we created a masterpiece, man. But it took every hour of our fucking lives it's for the last few it. months. But yeah, I was excited. Man. Even, did we, I don't know if we, we talked about publicly, you were supposed to do a stand up earlier this year, right? Yeah, that's still on the, that's, yeah, that's, that's oh. another thing. <laughs> 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 I can't speak about that one, you know what I mean? But yeah, this is, this is same same platform. Who knows, bro? You know, We're still free agents out here. You know what I mean? You never know. You Listen, never know. Man. That's all I'm saying. You never know. All right, it's December, which means we can officially start watching Christmas movies. But what if you go to Netflix and discover your favorite Christmas movie isn't available? What is your favorite Christmas movie? Mine is A Christmas Story um, with Ralphie, by far. Uh, I can't front though that jingle jangle that jingle jangle slaps all right uh, but get ready to have your mind blown you can use ExpressVPN to watch any Netflix f library in the world jingle jangle is actually on Netflix okay this weekend um, I used ExpressVPN to scream uh, the new Christmas classic I believe okay which is jingle jangle but gremlins Oh, yeah. People That's forget, a Christmas movie. Yeah, people yeah. forget Gremlins is a goddamn Christmas movie, man. Just like they forget Outcast Players Ball is a Christmas song. But it was so simple. I just opened the app, hit one button to change my location, refresh Netflix, and that's it. Okay, see ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 countries. So just imagine all the Netflix libraries you can explore. And of course, it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. Disney Plus, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, you name it, they can do it. All right, there's hundreds of VPNs out there. But the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch movies and shows is because it's fast, ridiculously fast. Right? There's never any buffering, and you can always scream in HD. ExpressVPN works with all your devices, too, including phones, tablets, consoles, and smart TVs. So you can use it to watch whatever you want on the go or on the big screen. Now, listen to me. This is very important. If you visit our special link right now, expressvpn.com slash idiots. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show. Watch what you want and get your holiday fix at expressvpn.com slash idiots. You, uh, you can use that to watch Schultz's special on, on, right. on December 17th. Schultz Saves America. All right. So make sure to support the show. Watch what you want. Buy what you want. I mean Andrew Schultz's show Saves America. Let's go. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Expressvpn.com slash idiots. A wise man once said, when it rains, it pours. I think that was DMX. Okay? <laughs> I'm pretty, was it DMX? I think a few people have said that. I think that. a few people have said that. I like the way DMX said it. When it Fact. rains, motherfuckers get wet. We're talking about rain and pouring. Charlotte, you had a decent week this week, did you not? I had a pretty good week. Did you have a decent week? Now, I heard, I saw a poster too talking about deals being made, mm -hmm. talking about re signing to iHeart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, for another maybe five years. Yeah, I did another five year deal. Now, to what, me, what I, I don't, heard. I don't know how long you plan on doing it, but to me, it kind of felt like this was like maybe your possibly last deal. I don't know. I mean, you know what? You 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 you, you feel that way, right? But then, on the same day, my deal got announced. Howard Stern's deal got announced, hey. and Howard Stern signed for another five years, and Howard was like. Shit, I have no reason to leave. I do the show from home. He's getting 120 fucking million dollars a year. Is that what he's getting? Yeah, so it's like, and I, I'm looking at Howard. I'm like, now Howard's 60 something years old. I'm like, would I still want to be doing yes. radio? I probably could. Yes. I mean, I, I, I'm a talker, like, right? Like, you we love talk. It. I, I love radio. I, I actually enjoy radio. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know what the I'm, I'm, I honestly, truly can say I don't know what the future is. I'm, I'm sure everybody was asking you to sign. Why specifically iHeart? Um, loyalty. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it says something when you've been with somebody for 10 years mm -hmm. and, you know, they've, they've just always had your back. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, and I, I like iHeart for a lot of different reasons. I like iHeart because they let the creatives be creatives and they let... They really do believe. They got out the way. They get out the way, and they really do believe in freedom of speech. Yes. Right. I mean, yes. this is the same. This is a company that goes from Rush Limbaugh to Bobby Bones to Elvis Duran yeah. to you know the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne, right? And then you know Premier Radio Network, same thing. You got Steve Harvey. You got you know uh, Mario Lopez. Like they just have a bunch of different 
voices, right. right? And you know, I love radio. So if I'm gonna stay in the game of radio, there's no better place to be than- you gotta be the biggest company. There's no better place to be than iHeart. You yeah. know, and, and plus the fact that they've always empowered me as a talent, but now they're empowering me as an owner and an executive. Because right. you know, the first announcement that came out was the Black Effect Podcast Network, yep. which I'm 51% majority owner of, right? So they're enabling me to have this company, which I would have anyway, mm. but partnered with iHeart on it, a majority owner. That's a different level of empowerment, mm. right? That's 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 really honoring our relationship in a real way. You know what was really cool about the uh the pod network was uh outside of like the podcast that came on it, but seeing all the people that I've been working with with you get jobs on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like Taylor is employed by the Black, Black Podcast Fight. Network, right? Yeah. And like you have all these people that are actually working. We're 100% black staffed. Is that right? 100% black staffed. What time does everybody get in every day? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we can work from home, okay? <laughs> Luckily, everybody can work from home. But 100% black staff. Dolly, but, but Dolly Bishop is the president of Dolly, the network. Dolly, exactly. We met, you, know, you know, where we meet Dolly over at MTV, right? Met, yeah, I met Dolly at um, MTV ugh, like maybe six, seven years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean, and it's the same as like it's like me and your relationship. It's just one of those people you meet and you're right. like, I knew this dude in another life. I knew this person in another life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like Dolly has, has been a home of your mind, family friend forever, you know? And it's just like she's so dope and so creative and so smart and got her own resume that she's been building. And I'm just like, all right. if, I, if I got the opportunity to make somebody the president of my network, yeah. Now we're not going to be humble for a second. We don't have to be humble when we talk about taking care of our people and like providing them with opportunities. I don't think so. I, you're just telling the truth. I'm just saying, because that's fire, bro. Like, given the first opportunity, not the first, I'm sure you had other opportunities, but given the opportunity to like put people in positions of power and get them some money, like both of us, this last few weeks, that's exactly what we've done. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, listen. I, it's easy to talk about. That's what I'm yeah. saying. There's a lot of people talk about empowering that kind of shit, but like, I don't know if you see it exactly. I know? just think I just think uh, what we've always done is just being magnified now. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's not, I, I was reading in my Daily Affirmation book this morning and they talked about how whatever you do with a little is what you're going to do with, with a lot. lot. Ah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it yeah. don't matter what position you're in. You can assist anybody if that's who you are yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. some people just ain't built like that Mother, if, if a motherfucker is constantly telling you man just wait till wait till i get this uh wait till i get that i'm gonna i'm gonna put you in yeah. i'm gonna put you in position yeah, yeah. Nah, if you got 50 cents give your brother 10 yeah uh, or 15 20 you can do something yeah you know what i mean some people just ain't built like that so yeah. yes black effect was the first thing they empowered me as an owner and now they empowered me as an executive um I can't even remember my exact title right now. What's my exact title, Taylor? Charlemagne the God, bro. Like I'm a senior executive. See, but basically, I'm helping Man, uh, cultivate new talent, create new programming. Really? Yeah. Um, help. Uh huh. You are the senior creative officer, officer of cultural content and programming, and co-founder, EVP, and chief creative officer of the Black Effect Podcast Network. Yeah, all of that. So basically, so so yeah, for for the iHeart, I'm helping to develop new talent. That pointless ass title, bro. Hey man, what, I'm a senior what executive. Pointless ass. A, they just call you senior black. <laughs> you the senior black at iHeart. No, nah, I'm not the senior black. Though. Cultural awareness and <laughs> but culture is not just black though. It is though. Nah. No 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 no. no. Culture is culture. You no, know what I mean? I agree with you 100 percent on that. And I use the term culture in different ways, but mm -hmm. there uh, there obviously is the term, the culture that mm -hmm. black people have mm -hmm. coined and it is a reflection mm -hmm. of black culture, right? But I'm just helping to curate new talent, uh, curate new programming, um, events, which we already do anyway. You know what I mean? Like events, community, community initiatives, stuff like that, which I, which I already do anyway. Mm. So it's just like, boom, there's the title. So, and it's also just a way for me to, you know, walk around the building and tell Taylor to watch how she talks to a senior executive at iHeart. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. So, yeah, life is good. Life is good, life man. Life is good. So I mean, what, else, what else going on this week, bro? This week? What else happened this what week? What a fucking idiot? Is there a... I had a what a fucking idiot in my mind. I have literally had a what a fucking idiot. Maybe that's a good thing that we didn't uh, have a what a fucking idiot. Because I was just so happy about what happened with you. But I did. It was something that I wanted to come in here and say what a fucking idiot about. The Cardi thing? COVID Which one was it? You talking about the donkey day today? 
No, it wasn't that. The Cardi thing with the bag. My what girl randomly told me. Like she said she wanted to buy this bag. And then people were hitting her up on on Twitter saying like it's messed up that you should buy you say you're gonna buy an eighty thousand dollar bag while people are out there suffering. Oh, I and didn't mind it. To Cardi's credit, Cardi was started posting like her charitable donations. I wouldn't even have did that. First of all, Cardi is acting her wage, and this is the thing <laughs> about social media, and we yeah. have to remember this. You're not Cardi B, and that's what people need to realize. Yeah. Just because you can add a person, yeah. Uh, 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 and if that person may even respond to you, y'all yeah. not on the same level. Like yeah. social media is literally the safari, right? Like you get in your safari and you watch how other people live. Yeah, yeah. Cardi has money to spend on an eighty-eight thousand dollar bag. Yeah. So when she gets on there and she goes, "Yo, man, should I, you know, buy this eighty-eight thousand dollar bag? What y'all think?" That's the equivalent of you saying, "Hey, man, should I get pizza hot or Papa John's today?" <laughs> yeah. And that's not a diss. It's just that she's acting her way. That's, that's the what position 80, she's in. Means to her, yeah, Come on. yeah, yeah. She's yeah, operating yeah. from a level of a person who is in that position, yeah. and I think it's weird for people to see because they watched her come from the bottom. Yeah, they remember her when she was seven, five, six, seven years ago when she yeah. was just in the script club and she was making funny Instagram sketches and yeah, shit like that. Yeah. Like, I think it's weird for people, especially if you're still in the same space, yeah. but you've had to watch this person evolve over the past six, seven years. You can't get mad at her yeah. because she can afford an $88,000 bag. That's how she's living. Then right. she turn around and flex on you again and show you how much money she's donated to charity. I wouldn't have did that because I'm yeah. just not in the... I'm like, I'm not explaining my, myself to people on social media. Yeah. I might do it on the podcast yeah. or on the radio, yeah. but I'm not going to get on social, <laughs> I'm not getting on social media to explain my fucking self because all they're going to do is take you out of context. Right. They did that with uh, Carrie and Jamel. Who's Carrie and Jamel? Carrie Champion and Jamel Hill. Oh, that actually was it. Okay. Let's set that up because mm -hmm. that is interesting. That, that's actually an interesting conversation. It's, I, I put that in the what a fucking idiot category. Yes. Because. But, but yeah. Okay. Beca because of the social media reaction, because. I watched. Can you I watched say what the show it is? On Vice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the show on Vice. I want, I want Taylor to insert the clip too. But they had Jake Paul on. Jake, um, considering where we are right now in our racial conversation in America, was what you did to Nate Robinson racist? <laughs> that is the uh, question of the week, man. Nah, stop playing with me. Come on. <laughs> um, Jamel Hill starts it off by saying, "Did you think it was racist?" For, that you that you uh, knocked, knocked out, out Nate, Nate Robinson. Robinson. And she's she's laughing the whole time, all of that shit. And Jake's like, uh, stop playing with me. He knew he knew yeah. he said it. Yeah, He's yeah. like, ah, stop playing with me, man. He was like, that's it's boxing, whatever, whatever. Then something happened with his computer. So then it, it froze. So Carrie goes, oh, you're frozen. Okay, let's start from the top. So Carrie doubles down. She's yeah, like, yeah. was it racist that you knocked yeah, yeah, that you yeah. didn't answer? Jake Paul's like, oh, that was a, that's a shitty question. Like yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever. Y'all yeah. had to know they were playing, yo. Social media had to know they were playing. Here's the thing. If any, not anybody else, but if most other people ask that question. It's because it's Jamel. It's a joke. But when Jamel Hill, yeah. her career has turned into, here's why everything's racist. When you ask the question, which is consistent with all the other questions that you're asking her statements, people are going to take you serious. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing. Like Jamel, Jamel. She got to know that. Yeah. Jamel's an amazing talent to me. I've always res respected she Jamel. She knows if a fourth round pick that's a punter had said something racist 14 years ago in like a, <laughs> you know, a, a, a term paper he wrote for middle school. Like she'll find that somewhere and then she will post it on Twitter. It's like, see, look, the punter for the Patriots is racist. He shouldn't be in the NFL. And then you ask Another question that's as consistent with that, and then people take it out of context. You can't be like, I'm a comedian now. But you know what's fucked up about that shit, though? Jamel always has had a sense of humor, and she's always expressed it, but I guess it gets lost in the wokeness, I would call it. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess, it gets, yeah. I guess it gets lost in that. So people have a narrative about Jamel in their head. So as yeah. soon as they see that, yeah. they're like, oh, hell no. Yeah. But it's, it was clearly I knew a joke. she was joking. I knew she was joking. And if anybody else asked it, I think it's a joke. If you asked it, it's a joke. No, I wouldn't ask it like that though. How would you ask it? I would have said, um, I would have said, so Jake Paul, uh, do you believe in the Black Lives Matter movement? <laughs> and when he said he, when he said yes, I would have said, so why did you kill Nate Robinson? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's how I would have done it. You know what I mean? I would have done it like that. But you know, I, I mean, I, I just, it's just the fact that people reacted the way they did to Carrie and Jamel. But they do that all the time on social media. They take a clip. They mm -hmm. manipulated, they cut it up. They didn't even start with Jamel. 
It started with Carrie. Because mm. Carrie's tone was a little more serious, even though she was joking as well. Right. And then Jake goes, oh, that's a shitty question. And he, she goes, why is it a shitty question? Because so even though she's being sarcastic and playing, it yeah, looks yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. she's dead ass serious. Yeah. And I'm just like, how could y'all spend all day or at least half a day mad at this obvious sarcasm? Because people just hate hypocrisy. That's yeah, all it is. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and it looks hypocritical. It's like that Chappelle joke where he's like, uh, just because I'm dressed this way. <laughs> you remember like when he was wearing a policeman's mm -hmm. outfit and mm -hmm. the girl's like help help and he's like just because i'm dressed this way why would you think i'm a police officer and that's the same thing it's yeah. like if you're gonna you know dress the part people are gonna treat you as a part i felt that way about uh how everybody reacted to casanova this this, this week too what happened with that he got locked up or something yeah he got locked up on a, a federal indictment uh -huh. and um i guess in the paperwork i was reading the paperwork the paperwork said that you know uh it was something it was some interviews that he did you know, I guess it was some interviews about a stabbing or something like that. And then everybody, um, you know, took a, a clip from Vlad TV and it became this whole, you know, Vlad TV is the feds. Right. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like we're missing an opportunity to have a bigger conversation when we can't look past our personal feelings for people. Right. So mm. same thing with Jamel. People have personal feelings towards Jamel. They have a narrative about Jamel. So they couldn't even see that it was sarcasm and it was joking. Right. Same thing with Vlad. People have, you know, ill feelings toward Vlad. It's mm. a narrative about Vlad. So they just harp on that instead of looking at the bigger picture. Right. The Question. Bigger, yeah, go, go. The bigger picture is. Well, go ahead. What's your question? Uh, would Jamela Hill afford that same, um, I guess, uh, I don't know patience luxury or, yeah, yeah. or luxury to someone else i don't think she would like i, I, don't, I don't think know. that's a good question just based on what i've seen from her i don't think that she would have the same tolerance and maybe it's coming from a good place maybe it's like i have a zero tolerance policy to any racism i don't care how old you are or anything that could potentially be misconstrued as it i hate racism and i'm not tolerating none of that shit and i i'm not anti that at all mm -hmm. but because she presents herself as having zero tolerance policy she can't look at maybe someone who was a kid and maybe made a mistake or did something dumb, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it may, maybe she's kind of blind to that. So then you look at that person, you're like, oh, so she has no tolerance for forgiveness or no tolerance for jokes or no tolerance for any of that kind of stuff. So then I'm not going to have any tolerance for her. She yeah, set the table. Absolutely. They couldn't wait. Like, and that's the thing, though. When you have, when you they have, they couldn't wait. That they is couldn't true. wait. Yes. When, when you have a voice, when you have a platform, I mean, the good thing is this, right? Your voice matters. Yes. Because if your voice didn't matter, they wouldn't be on your ass like that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. Jamel and Carrie's voice matters. But they could they can't wait to jump on Jamel. Mm. They can't wait to catch Jamel slipping. You know what I mean? Because of the fact Jamel will call people out on their shit. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You when you're that type of person, when you're that type of personality, you have to know that comes with the territory. I tell folks all the time, everybody gets a turn. Yeah. Every there's not one person who has a podcast, a radio show, a TV show. If you're vocal for a living, mm -hmm. eventually you will get a turn. Yes. That's why I don't fall into that social media darling love. Social media is full of shit. They don't yeah. like you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you and, and some people literally They don't like you, they just like that you agree with them. Yo. They like what you guys yo, have in man, common. In I wish I had my laptop. Saying. I want to pull it's this Barack Obama quote that he said yeah. in an interview a couple weeks ago. I Where's my phone? Yes, Barack said, this is in regards to defunding the police. He said, the key is deciding, do you want to actually get something done or do you want to feel good among the people you already agree with? That's all social media is. It's a bunch of motherfuckers trying to feel good among the people they already fucking agree with. So if you wake up every day and you have to wait for social media to tell you what to think, you have, you see something and you scroll down the timeline to see what other people are thinking and then you formulate your opinion, bro, you're gonna have a hard life. It's gonna be a long yeah. day for you I all always, the time. I always wonder like, if you couldn't see how many retweets or likes you got, if people would even tweet this stuff. Yes. And yes. if they wouldn't, yes. it's because, it's not because they don't, it's because they don't really care about the issue. What they care about is that positive feedback. Yes. You know, they're just tapping into the reward system. Yes. How can I get some pats on the fucking back? And it's bullshit. You know, by the same time, I'm not going to be somebody to hate on social media because social media gave me a career in a lot of ways. Right. It gave me the opportunity to connect it did with all people. of us. Yeah. So yeah. Like we all we all won off of it. So we're all, you know, it's 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 amazing, but it's also shitty. But it's so easy to get caught in that vacuum, especially when like 
if you tap into a movement, it could be wokeness, it could be Trumpism, it doesn't matter. But if you tap into a, a movement that is super passionate and you just say the things that those people want to hear, that is a express lane on the highway yeah. to uh, some social media fame, if you will. Yes. So you got to be very careful. Like just as like the athletes that go MAGA, like Kobe Covington and those people, you got to be careful because the second you leave MAGA, all those people. MAGA going to turn on you. Not yet, 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 because they never <laughs> fucked with you as a fighter. That's they right. They fuck with you because you agree with them. That's right. And the same thing with Jamil. It's like if you build your fan base as only people that are part of this woke sector and then you want to diverge from that a little bit because your opinion is more nuanced on a topic, they're going to eat you too. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I mean, I think uh, like, you know, some somebody like Jamel, Jamel, people love Jamel, right? But then people really don't like Jamel. I think what 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 fucks with you is when you're just doing you, right? And then all of a sudden, the people who you thought fucked with you give you that backlash on social media. You because they never I mean? fuck with you. They never. They, they never. That's the thing. They never really fucked with us. Yeah, just agreed. That's it. So they can't. And they can't wait to fucking turn those tables on you. Everybody gets a turn. Yo, that's the thing that I realized about this game, bro. Is like. And maybe it come full circle a little bit. It's like if you do it the quote unquote right way, like if you actually like stay true to who you are. The right way is not giving a fuck. It's not giving a fuck. And and, and, and even that, and I'm not even gonna I, I, I that that became cliche for me at, at a time. Like it's almost like a not giving a fuck is is a character. It's a character. You sometimes, give a fuck. Sometimes we all give a fuck. Yes, we wouldn't be talking into a microphone so people could <laughs> listen if we didn't give a fuck. Yes. Absolutely. But it has to come a point where you <laughs> You can't, give the least amount of fucks. Of the give a fuck people. Yes. <laughs> That's but, but really you, what it is. But you, you should just, my, my thing is this, just be true to you. Yeah. And but it takes longer that way. That's the thing about being true to you, right? Is when you're true to you, people have to remove themselves yeah. from their ideology and fuck with you. And it's so much easier to go, where y'all going? Y'all going to the park? Well, I'll go to the park with y'all. Yeah. It's way easier to do that than going, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the beach. And they're trying to go to the park. And then you're just like, well, I'm still going to the beach. Yeah. And y'all don't have to come. But eventually, you might want to come with me. And it takes longer. But it is so much more fruitful because at the end of that journey, the people that fuck with you aren't going to purposely take your shit out of context. Because all of a sudden, it's like a friend. Where if my friend says something fucked up, that's my friend. He's not cut off. I got to go, well, what did you mean by that? Then he explains it. And I go, oh, okay. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the group think the group think of social media is gonna ruin y'all too because a lot of these people they don't even feel the way you think they feel they're just going along to get along. So I know you see these hundreds and thousands of tweets of people and you think they're on your side. No, they just don't have the nuts to go against the grain. Mm -hmm. They don't have the nuts to get on Twitter and be like, man, y'all fucking tripping right mm -hmm. now. Y'all are wrong. You're, descri like, yeah. like, you You're know describing I mean? Hollywood. Like there's everybody in Hollywood. Explain. Like Hollywood, this like super liberal Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody out there is like, okay, we need to be incredibly progressive, incredibly woke, because that's how you oh, work yeah, there, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, 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 and yeah. then the second, some shit when some shit don't make sense, and everybody's sitting around like, this don't really make sense. But they nobody should, wants quiet, to say it. Quiet, <laughs> not gonna say shit. Quiet is it's the emperor's new clothes. You know that story about the emperor when yeah, the dude yeah, made yeah. him the clothes and he didn't make him nothing. He was walking around naked, and yeah. everybody's like, yo, that's just fire, yeah. emperor, right? That's literally what it is. Like they're the stupidest thing. And I always thought the emperor had a big dick. Maybe. Maybe he had the honestly, piece. I, that's what I always thought they was complimenting him. Might have had it. What, Might have had it. That's what I always thought. Maybe he was chiseled as a motherfucker. <laughs> maybe he was, seriously, maybe he was chiseled as a motherfucker with a big dick, and they was like, shit, fuck them clothes, Emperor. <laughs> you I, are the Emperor. Yes, you fire. <laughs> Walk around like that. All, that's what I always took from that story. Fair enough. That's not it? <laughs> no, no. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's a white thing to not assume he has a big dick. But, uh, but, but no, the point is, is like Hollywood shuts down because of Corona. What happens to all those motherfuckers? They all move to red states they all move yeah. to texas they all move to nashville yeah. all of a sudden those values carolinas. that were the carolinas yeah. florida all of a georgia, sudden i mean georgia's historically a red state they turn blue but yeah sure but you know what I'm saying? so yeah. all of a sudden like all those values that were so important to them and the, all, all these people were like i could never live in a place that didn't have the perfect bathroom setups and all this shit all the things they really cared about all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're like oh i could save a few points on taxes well shit Take me yeah. to Texas. Take me to Red State. It's phony bullshit. And the second that they didn't need the things from those people, I'm out. Yeah, I think what we're essentially saying is just um, Jamel's success took a shot at her. That's all. Her success took a shot at her. You know, when you're successful and you become successful, you know, 
being who you are. It's just like people can't even see past, you know, the narrative they've created for you in your mm. head. Good or bad. Because mm. in some people's mind, Jamel can't do no wrong. Yes. In some people's mind, all she does is wrong. And this was just another example of, see, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, the yeah. shit I'm talking about when it comes to her. Yeah, But yeah. she was clearly being sarcastic. She was clearly joking. Some now, people were like, wait, why are we being sarcastic? That's a good question. What do you mean? They were like, no, it wasn't. Ra- it was racist. Why would he do that? I bet no. there are people that I bet there are people that were like, yo, it's it's fucked up. Yo, and Nate called out Jake. I never thought Rocky was racist. Nah, he's Italian from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 okay, be very so honest. Listen, here. If Rocky was racist, what the fuck was Ivan Drago? Oh, that motherfucker was super racist, bro. <laughs> super racist. He thought Rocky was black. He's like, why am I fight? Why am I fighting this black guy? <laughs> what does happen with this black guy <laughs> fighting? This is bullshit. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some pills, man, because we need to get you guys some food. We need to get you guys some food. We need to get you guys some deals, and we need it delivered right to your door. And the way that we do that is with DoorDash, all right? No other company is DoorDash only, all right? DoorDash has partnered with, what is it, out over 300,000 partner merchants. I mean, it's unbelievable the connectivity that they have. This is in the U.S., obviously, Puerto Rico, Canada, Australia. You can support your local go-tos. You choose from your favorite national restaurants, Chipotle, Wendy's, the Cheesecake Factory. Honestly, they have them all up there. Many of your local restaurants are still open, all right? I know that there's all these corona rules, things are being shut down, but they're still doing delivery, and the only way they could stay open is they keep on delivering that food. So if you do want to support them, order from them, keep them open is a tough time for everybody, and DoorDash is the way to do it. So you can get 25% off. You hear this? 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and you use our promo code BI. BI, okay? That's 25% off, up to $10 value and zero delivery fees. Come on. This is off your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code BI. Don't forget BI for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Let me start the show again. <laughs> <laughs> like, geez, he fucking killed Apollo. Yo, by the way, Nate Robinson fell just like Apollo fell, yo. I didn't even realize that. Mm-hmm. That shit is fucked up. Mm-hmm. That fight should have never happened, though. Nate called out Jay. I don't care. That, that's Twitter. Yeah. That's why Twitter is in real life. Yeah, that boxing is real Leave life. Leave that bro. shit alone, man. Yeah. These motherfuckers will fuck you up. Even yeah. this shit uh, Logan Paul about to do. Why, Logan? Son, I hit them up, bro. I hit up uh, Logan. I was like, bro, I, I don't even know what's going on over here. I, I'm like, how are we going to sell this fight? Like, I'm, more that's disappoint- what I'm, about. I'm more disappointed than Floyd. Can you hate on Floyd? Yeah. But how? I'm disappointed because he is one of the greatest boxers of all time, 50 and 0. What has Logan Paul done to be in the ring with you? What has Logan Paul done to generate that kind of payday? I know you're going to make money, Floyd, but Floyd, you'd make money fighting anybody. You'd make money fighting Pacquiao again. Yeah, you know but that, I mean? that is risky. There's risk with Pacquiao. I get it, but eh. Yeah, for what? Like, like I mean, yeah. I, guess, I guess he saw the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones pay uh, pay per view. I think they did like one point five million buys at fifty dollars. Oh yeah, that shit was stupid. They did like one point five million pay per view buys at like fifty dollars a pop. I really hope that they got some of that money. Did yeah, they, they get did. Percentage yeah, 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 yeah. Because because okay. uh, the guarantee was a million dollars for each of them, and they were just guesstimating before the fight, and it was like you know Michael probably walk away with ten, Roy will walk away with three. Now that shit is like. Damn, they tripled. You know what I mean? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. They got paid. Oh, that makes me so oh, happy. Yeah, yeah. They got you said paid. the best thing about that shit in your caption. You said, uh, these guys have offered me so much joy throughout my life. The least I could do is give them $50. Yo, know, Chris Rock told me, people don't pay you for what you do. Uh-huh. They pay you for what you've done. Mm. So when you become a Mike Tyson, mm. a Roy Jones, you're going to get this money. Yeah. Hey, God, why, why wouldn't I give Michael Roy $50 yeah, yeah, for yeah. all the years of entertainment they've given me? Yeah, like, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah, take yeah. this fifty dollars and run with it. Yeah, and that's what I think Floyd's in. And I hope I, I, you know, the first thing people always like to say is Floyd is having money problems. Nah, Floyd probably just likes money. I think he likes money. He just likes money. Yeah, and I think he's at a point where he's just like, look, I'm on an island. I don't really care. I don't care what motherfuckers think. Everybody knows I'm solidified. I think he's trying to chase the billion. Oh, you think he's billion? not there yet? But how is he going to get to the nah, billion with one billion. of these fights? I mean, a shit. couple of these. How much you okay? How much do we really think that they could? Okay, this is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. You have to, in order to sell this fight, 
people have to either hate Logan so much they want to see him get his ass kicked, or they have to believe he's got a chance. That's why I don't know why he didn't fight Jake. I, Jake just knocked out Nate Robinson. I think Floyd thinks he's fighting Jake. <laughs> I thought he was fighting Jake too. I think until just, I read it three times. I think this is racism. Yeah. I think yeah, Floyd yeah, thinks yeah, there's yeah, only yeah. one Paul brother. <laughs> So he's like, the blonde one on YouTube? Yeah, I'll fight him. So which one called him out? One of them called him out. Both of them have been called him. But Logan called him out and he had like a like a little Instagram video where he had his like uh, letters on his name like on a wall and he's yeah. like, you can't read this and blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's You can't blame like, this on Floyd not reading because I didn't, uh, not being able to read because I didn't know it was Logan either. I, I saw this shit and I was like, Oh shit, he fighting Jake Paul. It, right. it made, and I, I, even though I didn't like it, I was like, okay, that makes sense. He can act like he getting get back for Nate. And even when he sent that post about Nate, yes. I thought it was setting it up. Like, yes. I'm going to go get revenge. And look, it could be that Floyd is going, all right, I'm going to fight Logan. And then maybe on that same card, you have Jake fight somebody. And ideally, Jake knocks him out. And even if Floyd beats Logan up easy, Jake starts calling out Floyd. Then Floyd fights a brother. And then it's another payday. And maybe that's their whole strategy. And then it's brilliant. Let me tell you something about Logan Paul and Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. You're going to get killed fucking around them real boxes, bro. Okay. That is 100% true. And something needs to be concerned with. But here's the thing. In order for us to buy this fight, we either got to hate Logan or we got to think he's a chance. Logan is hard to hate. Like, the guy is a genuinely nice kid. He's good. He's living a good life. He's got an incredibly popular podcast. He's, and he's not going to lean into the whole MAGA thing or anything like that that would garner interest. I so did. how the fuck do we garner interest in a fight? I didn't know he existed until this week. <laughs> I'm not even lying to you. But, th but he exists within YouTube in a big way. Like I'm sure he younger does. younger folks really know who I, he is. I had no idea Jake Paul had a brother. I, when I saw the fight, yeah. I'm like, why the fuck is he fighting Jake Paul? Logan. And, then I had to and, I, and I read it again like, Logan. And then I saw somebody tweet like, that's not even Jake. No, like, Logan is more popular than Jake. Really? Yeah. He was the big one. So when Jake keeps talking about fighting his brother, he's actually talking about Logan. Yeah. Why did he just don't fight at the house? They probably have. They I probably I just, have. I they just, got a ring at the house. I, I, re I respect Floyd as a boxer. Yes. I just don't think he should disrespect the sport of boxing in that way. You know, I saw his daughter talk money. about how, you know, they're disrespecting boxing by having concerts at the fights. She, she said that. I thought that was Roger okay. Man. I thought it was dope too. Yeah. To me, this is disrespecting the sport of boxing. You're Floyd Mayweather, bro. You're 50 and old. Yeah. Like, yeah, why? Yeah, I wonder if they had the concerts because they don't have access to the footage of them fighting in the past. You know, in between fights, you usually show that, like, old footage. I just thought it was a good mesh of, like, culture and fucking They did it seamlessly. Like, yo, for a first-time event produced by those folks in terms of, like, the boxing world, they did that shit better than when Showtime started putting on boxing matches. Remember when Showtime started doing boxing yeah, for the yeah, first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, I remember watching those early days, and I was like, man, I need Larry Merchant. I need Roy. I don't know who these clowns are, but this is not HBO standard. I enjoyed it. The concerts come on, you yeah, go fix you fine. a drink, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? You come back, you sipping, you watching, you laughing, also, you Snoop joking. Snoop killed it. Ugh. Izzy killed it. Like Who was Izzy? Uh, Stylebender. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They killed, killed it. it. Yeah, and yeah, yo, yeah, and yeah. honestly, what they were doing is kind of difficult because when they're sitting like 10 feet away from each other, it's not the same energy like... You can't nah. really bust balls, joke around. You're like slapping nah. somebody. It's just, you feel a little detached. You know what Snoop and Izzy added to it? Regularness. Yeah, they were the average fan. They weren't the announcer like that. The one guy that was sitting there, oh my God, Mike Tyson just yeah, came yeah, through yeah, with yeah, the left yeah, hook. Yeah, He's yeah. on the ground. Like, you know what I mean? Like, who the fuck talks like that? You and know then what Snoop mean? is just like, na, 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 na. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember the other announcer's name. He sounded like Tory Lanez doing quarantine radio. Like, quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. quarantine, quarantine. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike Tyson. Oh my God, he's heating up. Like, who the fuck talks like that? Snoop. <laughs> NBA Jam voice? Yes. <laughs> Snoop and Izzy sounded like us sitting there watching the fight. Yeah. And yo, maybe that's the great thing about having non-professional boxers fight is that you don't need professional boxing announcers to say what's going on. It turns into like some street beef yeah, shit. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, even exhibitions, you don't need, like I don't really care about any of the technicalities. All right, hook, left, who gives a who fuck? Gives Let's a just fuck. talk about it, That's man. That's it. That's it. I want to see Deezus Romero doing that shit. That would be fire. Yes. Yeah. I want to see, like I want to see, I think that's a dope concept to have different people uh, hosting certain events. Events. Especially the shit that don't mean nothing. Yeah. I mean, they mean something. It's entertainment. But that literally was just entertainment that day. We were thinking for like, uh, for sports that you should be able to choose your announcers. Right. So like you could tap into another audio feed. So for example, Ooh. like let's say you watch Cowboys games with your pops and you're like, you know what, fucking I'm going to announce this game. And then you and your pops just announce it. And then uh. somebody could literally just switch the audio off on their screen and then listen to your version uh. of it. 
That'd be fire, right? That would be fire. That's a great concept. You know who else used to do that? You know who mm. bought that to the NFL at one mm. point? Dennis fucking Miller. That's right. A con- he was Dennis like a- Miller. People was didn't he like funny, it. Though? I don't remember him. He was, I promise you, if you go back and you listen to those Monday night games he was calling, he sounds like people sound now. He was a, he was a before his time. Okay. So they didn't appreciate it. They were like, man, get the we want bring back John Madden or whoever. You know what I mean? Like they were used to the announciness. And but he was just a regular ass. Regular dude. on there just talking shit. And that it was it made for good fucking. So you TV. enjoyed it even back then? Um, in hindsight. Uh, it was I, I didn't I didn't not enjoy it back right. then. It just felt like somebody just threw some cold water on you, like, like you right. know what I mean. This is like doing podcasting before podcasting. Yes, yeah. This yeah. had to be what early two thousands. So, low key, is that all being an announcer of a football game is is a podcast? Like most of it, they're not doing yeah. the play right because football's so stop and yeah. go. So yeah. a lot of it is just you just talking. Yeah. And what is it like in there? And and this. You realize a lot of them aren't really that good. Like, like guys yeah, like Tony Romo yeah, show you. Romo comes around and you realize how useless everybody <laughs> yes, else is. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. For real. Like, you just like, man, everybody's just announcing. Just guessing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Romo's good. I like Troy Aikman. Um, NBA. I, I don't know who the guy is in NBA. Jeff Van Gundy. Oh, no, Jeff is good. I do. I like when Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson host games. Yeah. Um, But I would like to see more. I would like to see Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, Shaq hosting a game. Announcing a game. Charles was announcing a game, dude. That's what Just, Ch- he's another one. That's why he bro- he broke the mold. He, he didn't really sound did. like everybody else that was sitting around at that fucking desk. Like the anchorness went out the window. Yeah. I don't want to say professionalism because he's very professional, but it's just a certain buttoned up way he of doing the things. Voice. He stopped the voice. Yo, when did we like create a voice for television? And who decided television, that radio, was the voice? Television, radio, all that shit. Hello, at nine oh, o'clock, yeah. we have this. And so people yeah. are actually changing that. Like, you know how like black people do their white person voice on a job interview yeah, or whatever? Yeah. White people are doing yes. a white person voice yes. on the news. That's, that's why, crazy. That's why Tory Lane's quarantine radio was so funny because he was mocking, mocking an announcer. Yeah. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. That's how yeah. these guys sound. So when you just get up there and fucking talk, you break the fucking mold, man. When do you think Americans stop talking in like that goofy ass English accent? Like, because we were English. And then we came over here. And do you think there was just a, like a sigh of relief where they were like, ah, oh, finally, I just get to say hello. I didn't know that. I mean, English people come to America. We were all speaking like English people. Bro, I was speaking of Bonics my whole life, bro. You, you, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, you, you didn't ever have an English accent. No. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a Geechee Gullah environment. Right. And by the way, every white person I ever met Geechee. sounded like the white people on TV. No. Oh, really? Like how Martin Lee told hey, my, hi, hi, my name's Jerry. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> like in my mind, that's how all white people sounded for a long time. Yo, that's the thing about like the South, which, and now it doesn't actually don't feel that way, but like, I wonder if because there's so much more land, people were, and also obviously history of racism, but like the segregation created way different uh, ways of speaking. Whereas in New York, like New Yorkers just talk New York. Yeah, everybody in New York has a New York accent. A New York accent. Except we for say, Staten Island. They got the craziest New York accent. Like, that's on another <laughs> yeah, except level. except for Staten Island. Staten Island's different. But, they, we are, you know, we put them there for a reason. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? You, know, you know how, like, they sent, like, the wildest slaves to Jamaica? Remember, like, like they couldn't handle, like, the slaves were just too much of a problem. Staten Island. Send them to Jamaica. That's what we did. You make it hard to get there. Yeah, you got to yeah. get on the fucking ferry. One bridge. <laughs> that's it. You got to go to Brooklyn before you even go there. We can't deal with these people anymore. Make all the fire departments out there. Make Got 15 fire departments. Did you see them get mad at Pete? For what? Bro, it's this dude named John Tobacco. This dude is the most Staten Island person you'll ever meet in your life. Slick back hair, yeah, yeah. wild ass plaid suit. Yeah, I love it. He got mad I at Pete because Pete was on SNL talking about this bar mm-hmm. that wasn't following uh, the state mandate. Yeah. Right? The New York state mandate for yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah. He, he was like, we was there for you with your father. When your <laughs> father died, we was there crying with you and your mom. You need to come down off your little uppity high horse and, you know, come back down and kick it with the little people. And I kind of almost feel like, you know, the ignorance level is so high now that you have mega millionaires who are on the national spotlight, like the folks on Saturday Night Live. Um, and instead of making fun of their friends and the local business owners who were broke and crushed 
and bankrupt. Instead of coming down here as fellow Staten Islanders and standing up for them and bringing a positive light to this thing, what they want to do is go on national TV and try to humiliate the little man when he's down. And I'm like, yo, that, that plate, whatever, I don't know what you fucking call it. Whatever that is in Staten Island, that area has the second highest COVID rate in New York state. Really? Close the fucking bar. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, like, why are you upset? Cause somebody's telling you the fucking truth. And for yeah. you to compare it to being there with somebody because their father died. Yeah. No, Pete's calling you out. So you don't kill somebody else's father. Right. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Right. And also Pete made a movie. About Staten king, Island. Oh, no, he, he never referred to people by his name. He just kept going, the king of Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to watch this. The dude name is Johnny Tobacco. I'll check it. Man, the it. shit is funny as I fuck. I will be though. honest. They're the funniest people in New York, though. Staten Island? Hand is out. Really? Hands out. It just, in terms of like just hanging out with somebody, not in terms of like, I'm not talking about like, here's my scripted bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's. Staten Island, or if you go to like deep Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brownsville, deep Absolutely. Brooklyn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bushwick, yeah, yeah. also yeah. like way not Bushwick. Um, what am I thinking about? Uh, gotta be Brownsville, bro. No, no, Brownsville, no. motherfuckers deep, are hilarious. Deep, 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 deep. Coney Island? No, man. Where the fuck? Bensonhurst? Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst yeah. is deeper than Brownsville? Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's different areas. I think Bensonhurst is closer to water. Okay. And I think uh, uh, Brownsville is like deeper into Brooklyn, like by Con like closer to Coney, right? Yeah. So, but those people like just hanging out with them, the ball busting shit that they say, the random like references to me, those are the funniest people. I mean, a hundred percent. It's like when you go to like, you know, there's certain neighborhoods where you go to and you meet somebody who is like too much from that neighborhood. Yeah, like you meet someone who's like to Harlem. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, too, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like he's like he's almost like. As soon as you make eye contact with him, pause. Pause, yo, pause, yo. Why are we talking more than a minute? Yo, chill. Talk to a girl, bro. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, men don't talk to men looking each other in the eye. Too much. Yo. You know what I mean? Yo, Dipset. <laughs> <laughs> but like those people, as silly as it is, they're the most hilarious to be. Yeah, around. they are. They are because they're caricatures. Yes. Without being caricatures, that's really who they are. But. They just take it to the extreme. extreme. Like I saw somebody post from New York. I don't know if it was It's Biscuit. They was like, yo, what's farther in New York? Is it uh, mad far or dumb far? Yeah. <laughs> which, 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 what's farther? <laughs> and you, and, you, you, and, and the mad what, people were like, I don't have a father. See what you just did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad people. <laughs> 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 no, but you hear what I said though? Mad people say, I don't have a father. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but yo, you know who the funniest dude is? This guy is so funny on Instagram, dude. What's the what's the kid's name? Ray something. Oh my god, I gotta I gotta talk about this dude on the pod. What's this guy, name? his name is Ray, but like with Matt R A. Like there's a bunch of wise. Al, can you look that guy up? I think I seen him before. He posted a bunch of like random he, New York street okay. stuff. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, you trusting Andrew, boy? Okay, this one right here. Okay, this guy right here. He does these rants. Okay. This guy, I got to get to the rant. Oh, my Lord. This shit was so funny. And he basically, like, talks about what it was like back in the day growing up in New York. Where's the one that we love, Al? Let's pay some bills. and Let's come back with a deep dive because I want to talk about this uh, Casanova situation. Not yes. necessarily the situation, but just the larger context that I think people are missing. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because I got to tell you about a liqueur that is absolutely delicious, Okay. If you watch Flagrant, you've probably seen it up in the Flagrant studio. It's a staple in our bar collection. It's a staple of mine. This Ellis Cream, it is uh, inspired by cremas. Okay, this is an ancestral recipe from Haiti. So I probably pronounce it wrong because I pronounce it with a Spanish accent for some reason. And they speak Creole. So cremas, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but you guys can Google it. It's been handed down from generation to generation. This iconic drink consists of a rich blend of fresh cream and pure grain alcohol with notes of coconut, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg. It's absolutely delicious. Perfect for the fall, winter time when you want something warm, heat you from the inside out. Since it's impossible to find them, this homemade uh, recipe in stores, founder Stevens Charles and Miriam Jean-Baptiste, I mean, that, that is some French-sounding names right there, decide to launch their own cream liqueur. So, Clemas is usually really thick, but they were able to capture its taste and make the consistency more liquid, allowing LS cream to be sold in stores, bars, restaurants, and thus becoming a premium black-owned alternative to, to the cream liqueur category, okay? It's also, wait for it, gluten-free, kosher, made with all natural ingredients and low in lactose, 
even Charlemagne can drink it. That's right. Not going to fuck up his skin or nothing. Low in that lactose. It's also gluten-free. Okay, it's gluten-free. I mean, guys, this is going to fit right in every one of your diets, okay? You're going to drink this and lose weight. You can drink Ellis Cream straight on ice, mix it in your coffee, cognac, vodka, or rum. It's absolutely delicious no matter how you choose to do it. Now, remember, you have to be over 21 years to buy this, but Ellis Cream is a great gift, and it must be in your home bar like it is in ours. Go online to creamls.com slash idiots and use the promo code idiots for 20% off at checkout go do that right now support 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 they are grinding it's absolutely delicious i want y'all to check it out and let us know your feedback all right let's get back to the show so let's do some quick church announcements yo real quick before the church announcements okay. i got that guy you got your uh, guy i got the guy this guy's so i ask so you should just bring it back Know that this jacket right here is not your oh, average jacket before. in New York. And for the ladies back in the day, this jacket was a statement level. And in the words of our parents, you seen a young lady with this jacket on, she was a fast ass young girl. <laughs> but y'all got the game fucked up now. Y'all want Birkins. I just missed the girls from back in the day who had baby fat jackets that came to the crib and got to working. See, y'all not understand it. Nine times out of ten, you don't know what it was like to watch your kid walk to your building. Nice little light skin slim thing with the baby fat jacket, basic jeans, and dirty ups. I don't know why y'all always did that fit with this, but y'all did. And if y'all was feeling yourself, y'all put the lip gloss on. But back then, this was our personal <laughs> identification card. Every female that had this jacket on, we knew she was on go. This was her way of telling us we didn't have to like a picture back then. You just had to like a sister back then that had on a baby fat jacket. Y'all females got it all twisted. <laughs> this guy's a legend. Yo, we showed... That baby fat jacket is more than New York, though, boy. I get what he's saying. But that baby fat jacket, yes. If you had that in high school, you definitely got pregnant in 11th grade. <laughs> Hey, hey, Taylor, what's your favorite jacket? She had a state property joint. No, I didn't. I had the fat jacket. And I meant to bring it, and I meant to bring it um, after Thanksgiving because that is the most warmest jacket still to this day. Was you a fast ass little girl? No, I was not. I mean, I know your mom's listening. She I mean, technically, me you were whatever he said. A he's track lying. star. You were a fast ass girl, yo. You like were a fast you ass girl. say to me, <laughs> yo, you say to me <laughs> that you, you can that, run, though. but you a fast young girl, bro. You are a fast young girl. You you was a fast. You was a fast young girl. Yo. Jack, thank you. What no, was your time? No, what was no. your time? What did you used to run? One hundred. I was a sprinter. Really? That's the fastest of the tracks. I don't believe it. You are a fast young girl, <laughs> bro. Taylor too low to the ground to be a sprinter. Excuse you believe me. it? She's First below the wind. Excuse me. Excuse She's me. below the wind. There's, She's like a bullet train. My height doesn't have nothing to do with how fast I can run. You sure? Yes. Yeah. Me and did you Joseph run to, with uh, the baby fat jacket run. on? No, was I did that not. part I of had your a track uniform. jersey? Huh? Had a uniform. When you would run, would they be like, "Damn, that's a fast uh, young girl"? Did you have the same build? Did you have the same build you have now? Yes, Charlotte. Okay. I'm just asking. Charlotte. I'm just trying to prank figure it out. Bowling balls Me? are fast. Look, what? What, what is that? What is that? Bowling balls are fast. Who said that? Why are you talking about this stuff? You you're see the one that run, she that rolled? Fucking, your jack was like a bowling ball. This is baby fat. Shut up. <laughs> Charles, me and you are racing. You're not gonna, you can't beat me in no race. Okay, so. bet. You can't beat me. You think race. your knees hurt now? You've been complaining about your knees all day. It's not my knees, it's my thighs, because I was doing squats. She, uh, yeah, right. she wasn't doing shit. squats. She was doing that new Megan The Stallion move. You saw that new move Megan revealed this week? Yo, you saw <laughs> what she was trying to do. You saw Tori say? Tori says she wild can't take boy. no dick. And he's a liar. Tori is a wild boy. Yo, but imagine boy. Meg can't take no dick, all that height and she no can canal. Tori is a wild boy. Stop. Boy, but why is that? Tori's wild? so wild. Tori make me think he is. Yo, real talk. I'm a hundred percent believing it. His feelings are hurt. Fuck him. But don't even. I would be trying to remove myself from that situation. I wouldn't want my name uh, attached with that. Like he's a fast young boy, bro. That's a fast. <laughs> yo, that's a fast, that's a fast young boy right there, bro. Yo, how fast is he, dog? For real, though. I don't know. He's that guy wild. is fast, bro. He's wild. He need to slow down. He need to slow that's down. What he need to do. He's too fast. Tori needs to ass, slow ass, down. Young boy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ch church announcements. Yes, uh, I just want to yeah. tell everybody, uh, uh, sub uh, keep subscribing to the podcast on the Black Effect Podcast yes, Network. Sir. You can go to the iHeartRadio app, type in Black Effect. Uh, all the podcasts that's on the, the, the network that we partnered with are up there. Um, who we launched it? We launched anybody this week? We ain't launched nobody this Holding week, right? 
launching. Yeah, we ain't launched nobody this week. Oh, yeah, 85 South Show. Let's go. Uh, officially partnered with the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Horrible decisions as well. Let's go. Salute to Mandy and Wheezy. So, yeah, like I said, just go to the iHeartRadio app, type in Black Effect. All the podcasts that um on the network will come up. And it's available everywhere you listen to podcasts. You launched Zuri? Yeah. I think we launched Zuri last week, right? Is this week? I don't know. That's my wife's new favorite podcast. I know that no, much. But no, you're right. We we did the interview this week, but yeah, it was yeah. Last week. Hot Happy oh, Mess shit. podcast with Zuri Hall, and make sure you go pre-order um Tamika Mallory's book State of Emergency. Yeah, uh, it'll be out May 11th, 2021, on Black Privilege Shaman and Schuster Publishing. So make sure you go pre-order that. Okay, and uh, Black make sure Privilege you- Shaman and Schuster Publishing is that a partner venture? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're publishing books as well? You didn't know that? Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, you missed that announcement? I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't know that. Yeah, I got more. You never I got told a, me that. I, I got a book publishing company. You Black can't Privilege. even pronounce Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this guy's got companies you can't even pronounce. This is but now I've been, I've, I've been in business with Shaman and Schuster, though. My first for two books. For yours, yeah. yeah so I, I mean, didn't know that you did a joint. But that's so great. Yes. Yeah, uh, Good for brave. you. <laughs> you said no, I said great. Oh, I thought you said brave. <laughs> not brave. Yeah, so the first release is um, Tamika Mallory, State of Emergency. It'll be out. May 11th. Good for you, 2021. man. 2021. But you can pre order now. No. Is it May? Yeah, May. May 11th, 2021. But you can oh, pre order now. Really great. Wherever you buy books, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, all of that good stuff like that. I mean, that, that stuff like that makes sense because I mean, I'm, I'm, I like books. I read. I'm it's, an author. And once again, I, I only want to create, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. I only want to create ventures that help me be able to assist and empower other people. Yep. That's it. You know? I also think it's great, like when you have leverage in a. I mean, this is what I've always tried to do as well is like when you have leverage within a business, it's like you can partner up instead of just doing things, you know, for someone. I, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. It's wild to me. Um, Except for Netflix, I didn't really get a piece of that company. But uh, but you're forging a relationship yes, with them. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And you're exactly. forging a relationship with them to where I'm sure they're gonna want to create more content with you in the future. Well, well, I would. The way I look at it is uh, is also is like we created this. Yeah. This is shot in Schultz Studios. Yeah. This is produced by Schultz Studios. This is directed by Alex Mia. This is our baby, you know. So it was really, it was really cool to like. Honestly, I got to give them credit, man. Like, they were fully hands off on this project. They, like, they, they should be. So clearly, somebody up there was in tune. That's the thing. Now, now, I, I don't know if that's me because I don't know what relationship like a, a young comic that was just coming up would have because they'd be taking a, a much greater risk. Mm-hmm. But you know, we put in a lot of work in creating content and creating Bro, you did 17 interest. you did 17 of these right exactly so we like, proved the product on. you know what yeah, i mean so like, you got analytics you got data yeah. you got views you got an audience yeah. you got hype you got joe rogan po- yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like you come yeah. on like you think they're not paying attention they see no. what's going on they're they like who it. the fuck is this andrew shows person yeah yeah no, so, they see it. but i gotta give them credit man i always give companies credit when like i remember when uh who was it ricky gervais did that golden globe speech and i was like yo you gotta big up the the exec that put their job on the line for, for this Gervais, script yeah. because he knew what the blo- the blowback was going to be and he was like the content is more important and I think it will work and that takes risk so anytime a company is is willing to let us create and then deal with the fallout yeah. of that creation because yeah. hey let me, all I gotta say is everybody gets these jokes bro that's all I gotta say. Hezzy being hezzy? Everybody, when I say everybody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Al, is there anybody that don't get these jokes? No, 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 no. Bro, everybody, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. Group if gets you're these not, jokes. If, 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 if Andrew doesn't get backlash, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be upset because that lets me know that, damn, Andrew, you didn't go. You weren't full Schultzy. This is what I would say. I would say, I think there's always going to be people who find upset, but what we tried to do with these pieces my stand-up is is a little bit more is a little different with than these pieces right because the stand-up gets to be like more absurd and like crazy and wild per se right because you're not having to say truth with stand-up you're saying the craziest funniest take Mm -hmm. and sometimes the funniest take could never exist in reality but it is just the funniest spin Mm -hmm. on something like Mm -hmm. when uh, chris rock is saying we should just sell bullets that's not like a, a real thing but it's just a funny take you know but I'll put the price on bullets. Make bullets super yeah, expensive. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, make Jackson it more expensive. Jackson kind of made sense. But yeah. Kind of, yeah, but you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? But And then it's like, um, so, so, but with this piece, we really try to stay within truth and really find the truth. And what I think is, if we did our job right, is that all the groups that we make fun of will be okay with the jokes because the truth that we're getting it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was what? like, eh. You know what I mean? It's a couple. Nah, they're going to be mad. No, we know what era we might, live in. Shots, they, shots. There's some wild shots. But like, there's a lot of them. But, uh, <laughs> but I think the truth is more important. And then what happens is they'll be like, all right, well, they made fun of the other group too. And then everybody's getting it. You're That's using, what I think. You're using something called logic, Andrew. Yeah, you might be wrong. It's not going to happen. Uh, but we'll find out December Hey, we're going to find out. <laughs> Listen, I'm putting out the thing I want to put out. This that's is what matters. That's all that matters. That's all that fucking matters, yo. Like, I'm in control of the creative, and that's, that's all, all I matters. try to work on is the creative. Everything else after that, how motherfuckers, if y'all like it, and y'all add it to your watch list, and you say to remind you when it comes out, and you spread the word, then it's going to be successful, and that's great. But to me, the success is creating the project I wanted to create. Nothing will piss you off more than going in these buildings and not creating the product you want, going out there listening to them, you're not doing you, you're doing them. That's really yeah. what it is. Yeah. And, that, and that's, what's, that's what's actually changing in the industry. It used to be a time, they love what you do, but they bring you in, they want you to be something totally different. Yeah. So you're not doing them, you're doing you. Yeah. That is what, that's what pisses you off when you go in there and do them yeah. and the shit ain't successful. Mm -hmm. You go in there and do you, whatever the outcome is, you feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. That's man. it, period. So I, I can't fucking wait. I still want you to do the other joint too though. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. That yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we gonna take it there, take it there, yeah, man. Oh, oh, trust me, Charlotte. We're going there. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. Use Charlotte. that white privilege, goddamn it! All right, we're going there. Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy's a little wild. I want to see people say son. he would never get away with this if he was black, son. He would never get away with this if he was Latino. He would so, never get away with this if he was female. I honestly, want all of it. Honestly, I think we'd get away with it way easier if I was all those. Because white people can't be upset at black people for saying anything. Yeah, you're right. Oh, you took it there? What do you mean? You took it there? What you mean? On the special. Everybody. When I say... Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. I don't think you understand. Like, no stone left unturned. No. <laughs> when I, when, there are certain pictures in the special. You're going to hear a joke and then you're going to see a picture pop up and then you're going to pause your Netflix and go, is that what I think it is? Bro, 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 bro. You can't even believe something. No stone left unturned. None. That'd be a funny ass commercial. Andrew just turning over different color stones. <laughs> This is a black stone. This is a white stone. Here's a pink stone. This one is this. What is <laughs> there might even be a rainbow colored stone in that show. <laughs> a circumcised stone. There's a lot of different stones there, bro. <laughs> a lot of different stones. Oh, I can't bro. fucking wait, man. Put it that way. Listen, um, I don't know if this is the deep dive or not. I just I, I saw everybody. Having the conversation about Casanova and, um, you know, they were saying something about, you know, what he said in the Vlad TV interview and in the paperwork. They didn't say Vlad interview per se. They just said it was some interviews mm -hmm. that they used against Casanova. Right. I want to take this out of Vlad because it's hard to have this conversation without people saying, oh, you know, you're defending Vlad, whatever, whatever. Right. I'm not defending Vlad. I'm just speaking about pure journalism. Mm. I can ask you whatever I want. Yeah. You're not getting indicted based off what I asked ask, you. Ask is what you responded with. Yes. You snitched on yourself. You and, and I'm not and I'm not even talking about Casanova in general. I'm just I mm -hmm. want to have a larger conversation about how for so long in our culture we have incriminated ourselves in the wildest of ways. And the FBI isn't just watching Vlad TV interviews. Hmm. <laughs> they watching Breakfast Club interviews. They watching Adrian Broner's Instagram. They watching Rap Radar. They watching your Instagram. Mm -hmm. They watching your Facebook. You on Instagram with guns, bro. You on Facebook, you know, uh, fighting people. Like you're, and you, it, it, there's so much criminal shit that goes on on social media. I get these people donkey today all the time. I gave donkey today to some up and coming rapper who made a song about scamming people with the PPP shit, and he was really doing PPP shit. Should you be mad at YouTube for letting him post the video? Is it YouTube's fault? Is it Instagram's fault if you get on your Instagram with guns uh -huh. and the FBI's like, oh <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you get on Twitter and you tweet, yeah, man, just had to fucking kill somebody, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Is that Twitter's fault? Yeah. Or is it the person who actually committed the act? Yeah. And 
is saying it wherever they're saying it. 100%. Same thing in the music. We're watching. We're watching uh, music be used against people in court. We're watching interviews be used against people in court. Yo, how about we just stop incriminating ourselves? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, it's just that simple. You can't blame anybody. Sometimes, at some point, you got to have some accountability. I saw Pee Wee Longway. My man Chuck T posted it. I never watched it until last day, but I saw Pee Wee Longway on Vlad TV. Vlad is asking them questions. Vlad is like, so, you know, you know, when did you first start hustling? He was like, hustling? I went to school. I ain't never did no hustling. I went to school. You know what I mean? Then Vlad's like, yo, it's a lot of blue in your video. You know what I mean? You cripping? He's like, no, I just like the color. <laughs> That's what the... And, how else are you supposed to answer that question? Like, why would you sit up there and be like, yeah, I've been gangbanging for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? I've been a crip since, you know, elementary school and yada, yada. You stop incriminating yourself, people. Yeah, yeah, That's it. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. be mad at this outlet. Don't be mad at that, that outlet. Because trust me, they're watching all outlets. Right. So it does not matter what that person is asking you. It matters what comes out of your mouth and how you respond. Right. Simple as that. So... I don't even understand the backlash. It's the same thing to me when I look at the, the Jamel situation. Like, I understand people have a narrative right. about Vlad. Right. You know what I'm saying? So being that they have that narrative, they want to stick to that, even if it makes them look stupid and illogical. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. it's stupid and illogical. These people are sitting in these interviews. They're on these records. They're giving up this shit. They're the ones saying yeah. all of this stuff. They're they know there's incriminating cloud themselves. But there's cloud attached. We got to stop doing that. We got to stop giving people um, clout for the worst shit. Well, that's up to us. That's, that's the other part of it. Like we play, we have a responsibility too because we don't listen to the music until you say that you used to kill people or murder or whatever like that. You know, when it comes to like that yeah. specific genre, like we don't care about the, um, I'm trying to think of other like, we care way more about the athlete. We want you to be real. Listen, I'm all right. I remember there was a time. But that real shit is bullshit, man. It is bullshit. Because it's not real. I don't even like that terminology. Like, Me neither. You're only real if you shoot somebody. You know but what there, I mean? There, there was a time where I wanted my rappers to actually do what they were rapping about, even though I know if they actually did what they were rapping about, they would be in jail. But who the the rap, who the, who's the top five? Give me your top five. Top five rappers of all time? Yeah, you have top six. I, I got a top right. seven. Sorry, um, top seven. My top seven rappers of all time, no particular order. Killer Mike, T.I., Scarface, Young Jeezy, Jay-Z, um, Nas, mm -hmm. and I'm missing somebody. Killer Mike, T.I., Ghostface. Ghostface. Ghostface Killer. None of these people are still doing the shit that they rapped about in the beginning that made them popular. No. Matter of fact, for their entire rap careers, they've set aside those things that they rapped about to make them popular. Outside of Killer Mike, I don't think he was ever rapping about that in the first place. Nah, because we've always been like so socially conscious. Yeah. Of music. So my point is, is that like we were talking about this on Flagrant. Matter of fact, is Jay Z. If you see Jay Z in his element, he looks like the coolest person you've ever seen. He's calm, composed. Nothing shakes him. Even in the elevator, right, with the whole mm -hmm. salon shit, nothing can shake. He's unflappable. And then you see him on the jet ski with the helmet and the vest, looking like a goofball, <laughs> right? You see him walking on the beach. He's a goofy, right? And then like, and I really believe that is because. What is cool to us is dangerous. It's not give a fuck. It is essentially like pushing away conventional wisdom. Yeah, because even what you just said, you call Jay goofy, but that's regular. But, well, well, You're on a jet ski with a helmet on. I'm about to justify it. Yeah, I'm yeah, about yeah. to justify yeah. it. So like what is cool is all the things that actually don't give you a career, don't allow you yeah. to make money, and don't give you longevity. Yeah. What I think Jay is, Jay is, and I bet you all those other people we mentioned as well that you just mentioned have a little bit of this in them, they're guys who actually... Kind of silly, goofy, nerdy. I bet they're nerdy. They learned how to be cool, to operate within a space, but it's their intelligence and their kind of nerdiness that allowed them to have this long career. There are very I don't few, even think it's, and I get what you're saying. Do you know what I'm saying? I like, just don't think it's nerdiness though. Uh, you know, maybe we're using different words. I guess what I'm trying only, to say is The only like, reason I don't like to say that because I don't want to label things because people shy away from what they consider nerdiness. That's fair, but like you, know what I mean? you you consider yourself a nerd for Marvel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll consider myself a nerd for comedy. You know what I mean? Like maybe the the nerd word is such a bad connotation, but Bro, a guy we're regular. Like, yeah, but it's it's almost like 
we're regular, but we're also able to look and see what is cool. And I guess what I'm trying to say, especially to like kids who like look up to these like these like oh I don't give a fuck personalities yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you don't want to aspire to be that because those people don't last ever. The people who last and they have the careers are the people that are smart enough to see what works, lock into it, but also utilize that intellect to not get caught up in the clout chase that's gonna end you fucking dead or or canceled. Yeah, you know what? Um, I think the problem with uh, rap in a lot of ways, a lot of the gangster shit became performative, right? So yeah. even though somebody like Jay-Z, It's like wokeness. Like, T.I. It started out with the right thing, like we should be woke, we should be progressive, and then it becomes performative to get attention. Well, sort of. I think, I think guys like Jay-Z, T.I. were really reflecting their life's experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. those are things that actually they did, they went through, that shit happened to them. Right. But I think at some point, gangster rap became so popular mm -hmm. that people just started doing it because it was profitable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like the when when Fifty Cent, Fifty Cent really did get shot nine times. Yeah. Like that shit really happened. Like people act like he made that up. Like so, it's now it's like okay, let me do the most gangster shit because this gangster shit is in, it. and I gotta have a gangster story to go along with my music. You know what I mean? That like when Chris Rock made CB4, that shit was. Very yeah. accurate, yeah, yeah. right? But I, I think the performative shit now has turned into people who really were doing it, mm. but it's they still realize it's a lane for the for 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 the performative shit. So even though they're not performing, mm -hmm. they just think they can get on these platforms and really talk about this shit that they did because so many people have profited off of. The, off of something they were really doing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That so, looks like the lane to victory. That looks like the lane to victory. And if you yeah. really went through that, yeah. you get on these platforms, you get in your songs and you talk about it, but you're not realizing like, bro, you ain't out the clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you not out the clear, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. and it's a weird thing about social media. People act like social media is not like real. Yeah. Like for you to actually be doing PPP scams. Unbelievable. And then make a whole song about actually doing PPP scams. Unbelievable, yeah. It's wild to me yeah. to be in the video showing off the applications, all of applications that you yeah. fucking manipulated to get this money. Like that shit is wild to me. So once again, man, um, don't get mad at the interviewer. Don't get mad at the platform. Mm. Get mad at the person that's incriminating themselves. Yeah, it needs to be a little accountability, bro. It got it got to be a lot of accountability. A little accountability. It got to be a lot of accountability. And listen, I don't, I don't, and I'm not talking about Kaz in particular. I'm not talking about any. I'm talking about all of us collectively as a culture. This should have been going on for a long motherfucking time, bro. Yeah, a long time. How many more people do we have to see? The FBI say, yeah, I heard his song. <laughs> yeah, I heard him in an interview. Yeah, yeah, we saw him on social media. At what yeah. point do y'all motherfuckers be like the FBI is Facebook and Instagram? Yeah. At what point <laughs> yeah, yeah. do you fucking say that is the fucking thing that's fucking us up? Yo, us getting on these platforms, acting yeah. like the shit that we do is legal, acting like the shit that we did yeah. is legal. Hold yourself accountable, man. Do yeah. better. You, you. Yeah. The show today, Brilliant Needles, is also brought to you by Cushy Dreams. I want to tell you about Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. All right. They specialize in extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower, a.k.a. bud, and pre-CBD joints. I tend to do CBD during the week. I do THC on the weekend because I want to relax and, you know, be able to sleep well and have my anxiety at ease during the week. CBD does that for me, not THC. Okay. Um. I like Cushy Dreams for a lot of reasons, okay? You can enjoy all the health benefits of CBD without getting high. Like I just said, it's cannabis that ships directly to you and it's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Looks like high quality marijuana, feels like high quality marijuana, and tastes like high quality marijuana. Cushy is 100% hand trimmed, never machine trimmed. Each batch is slow cured for two to four weeks to guarantee maximum freshness and preserve flavor and cannabinoids. Cannabinoids, best of all, is grown in the USA. Cushy Dreams has CBD flour in the pre-roll joints. They come in specific indigo sativa blends like energy, hustle, relax, and dream. Just go to cushydreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y. Get some high quality CBD bud. At checkout, use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Smoke your CBD. Let's get back to the show. Can you imagine like being one of those like FBI dudes who had to listen to hours and hours of people's tap phone calls? 
And then all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> people just start snitching on themselves bro, on Instagram. You know bro. that's happening in those departments. You know They're it's some so old happy, school, bro. bro. You know it's some old school FBI detectives yeah. like back, back in my day, day. <laughs> we used to have to sit on these wiretaps for months, <laughs> months and months and months. They would get burner phones, and all we have to we'd have to actually do surveillance. Bro. All y'all got to do is go up on YouTube and pull up the latest song. They probably can't even believe it. Bro, back in the day in, 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 with the New York mob, in order for the wiretap in the car to work, they had to follow that car with another car because the technology couldn't go more than two blocks. Wow. So imagine you driving around after this Italian dude just listening to him and his stupid ass mafia conversations wow. all day. All day for fucking hours, months, just to get one or two words. And then these dudes are literally giving you the highlight reel. They go on Vlad and they're just like, yeah, after I killed that person, I started doing this PPE scam. It's like, what? Shouldn't even get paid. It's, it's, it, I don't know, man. It's really, 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 really crazy, yo. Like, I, I don't know. I just want people to stop doing it because it's really wild. Like, you're really incriminating yourself. Yeah. You know you're incriminating yourself. Stop blaming it on interviewers. Stop blaming it on other platforms. Stop blaming it on other outlets. And, and I, I really feel, feel like a larger conversation is being missed here because everybody, people don't like Vlad. So being that they don't like Vlad, they're just stuck on, oh, Vlad's a fed, Vlad's a fed, Vlad's a fed. Um, no. Yeah, he's not forcing you to come no. on the show. You ask him to come on the show or he asks you and you agree, but it's not. And even if he asks you an incriminating question, yeah. don't answer don't it. Don't answer it. You're not getting paid. Follow your Pee Wee Longway shows you what to do. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Breakfast Club. If I, if I ask you some wild shit, don't answer. Yeah, but do though. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen. It's kind of fire, bro. Like we, when people incriminate themselves, that shit is good content. I've, but I've stopped. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I've edited a lot of shit out lately. Really? Yeah, because you just don't want to see motherfuckers get jammed up over stupid shit. Interesting. You know what I mean? Like, are they ever upset? Are they ever like, "Yo, I came here to nah. tell that story so that I could get no, clout"? A lot. Of <laughs> like, stop cutting that shit out. That's how you pop off, bro. You know what I mean? Like, let's go. All right, I'm gonna start. I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna start you giving. Kind of hurting people's careers, I bro. Might be. I'm gonna start giving people benefit of the clout. Give them benefit of the cloud. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, God bless. Salute to my man Kaz, though, man. I don't want to see Kaz get jammed up. Kaz is a good dude. You know, when I first met Kaz, you know, Kaz had the ankle bracelet on, and he was, like, doing security, just just trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was his job. You know, when you're on probation parole, you got to have a job. Mm -hmm. And that was his job. So, you know, I just, I, I, don't, I don't like to see him or anybody in that situation. That's got to be a really tricky thing. I mean, I don't know what he's what he's done or hasn't done or what he's accused of doing, but like that's got to be a really tricky thing like when you're involved allegedly obviously involved in like a criminal enterprise, but you also want to be a famous entertainer because those things go against themselves or go against each other. Yeah. Being in a criminal enterprise, you want to be as low key low key as possible. You don't want nobody to know nothing about you, but being in entertainment, especially a rapper, you want to be as high key as possible. Look at the jewelry, look what's going on, yeah, look at my man. lifestyle. It's so, somebody needs to make like like you know how Biggie made the 10 crack commandments? They need to have the 10 Somebody need to make some new commandments. 10 clock commandments, swear yeah. it up. Cuz it's weird like how how you go from the era I grew up in was like, yo, don't talk on the phone mm -hmm. about doing nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Don't even talk on the phone. How you go from not talking on the phone to doing interviews and putting it in songs? Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah. that's just weird to me. Like, I'm not going to lie. This whole shit is weird. And I'm telling y'all, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that shit is real life. The feds mm -hmm. are on them shit, watching them shit. Mm -hmm. So all them guns y'all be posting and the, 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 the fights y'all you know, videotape and show people assaulting people. All that shit is being used against people in courts of law, bro. Mm. All of it. Mm. So you can't point the finger at one person. Everybody's guilty. Mm. Everybody. If you if you if you've posted a video of a rapper holding automatic weapons, if you've posted a video on your page of rappers, you know, with a whole bunch of drugs around them, you're 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 incriminating mm. that well, that person is incriminating himself, mm -hmm. but you're helping. Mm. So it's just like Leave it alone. Like, mm. like we're all guilty. You can't point the finger at one person. Everybody's got a job to do, right? Mm -hmm. So, whatever, man. Uh, one question. Um, I haven't seen you since you interviewed Obama, and mm -hmm. I know you might have spoke oh, about it. Oh, fuck, yeah. Could you just, like, just tell what me was that was like? like? Yeah, I'm so curious. Yeah, what was that like? Overrated. Really? Yeah. What? <laughs> I mean, I just love Obama. Wait, what do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, like, what was he cool? Um... He gave you a little pushback. He gave you a little attitude. No, no, it was cool. Nah, he did. I'm just fucking like, with y'all. I'm trolling. It, it, it was cool. Yeah, it was <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
was like, yo, get off Obama's dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> nah, it was good. I mean, it was cool. It was a cool he interview. He gave you one little sass. He gave you a little sass once. When oh, yeah. He was like, that's why I got you. Yeah, yeah I was like, just, um, I mean, I, I hate I hate how Democrats message shit. shit you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, yo, uh, Obama gets a lot of flack for what he did not do. But yeah. it's like, tell people why you couldn't get it done. Right. You know what I mean? And I, and I, and I think, you know, Democrats can... Like, I, I love what they did last week, but I don't think they followed up. Like, they passed, you know, decriminalizing weed in the House. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to get passed because the Senate isn't going to do it. So everybody's reposting about, oh, the House passed decriminalizing weed, and they're all happy and shit. But there's like, no, now, since you got everybody's attention, let everybody know, yo, but this shit ain't going to pass because of the Senate. That's why y'all need to go in fucking Georgia and vote for John Ossoff and fucking Ralph Warnock. So it's just like, I hate that they don't understand messaging and even mm. in Barack Obama's book he says that he has a hard time breaking things down in a way that is digestible for everybody because mm. he's always he's a politician and that's that's what I got from Barack I you know Barack is a great person um I just think that he's uh what 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 he represents isn't actually what he is mm. so what he re mean? he represents a symbol of 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 revolution cuz you know a black president in the United States of America in in itself is revolutionary. Right. You know what I mean? Just based right. off the history of this country, everything sure. that we, we, we the, the systemic racism in this country, to see a black president is revolutionary, mm. right? But he's a politician. Mm. He's a centrist, probably leans a little more conservative, <laughs> establishment. Politician. Politician. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And by the way, you need those. He's a great politician. Yeah. You need that. Yeah. Just don't look for him like he said. I mean, he's not Malcolm X. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not he's not Tamika Mallory, but that's why everybody plays a part. He said that right. during the interview. Everybody plays a role. You need a Tamika Mallory. Right. You need a, 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 a Barack Obama. You right. need all of that. You need people that are just constantly stirring it up everywhere. Let the yeah. folk, let the radicals stir it up in the street mm -hmm. so they can make enough noise that we got people in position that are listening to say, mm. look, man, this is what... We need to get done to yeah. calm that down. I always go back to the uh, King in the Wilderness documentary when Lyndon B. Johnson, man, he called Martin Luther King Jr. And he goes, what the fuck is going on? And watch. They are tearing watch the fuck up. He said, I gave y'all voting rights. I gave y'all civil rights. What, what, what's, what's up? And Martin's like, yo, we, they want that money. You know what I'm saying? It's about economics now. But the fact that Lyndon called Martin, mm. that's what you need. Mm. So when Tamika and all of them are in the street doing what they do, somebody got to call President got to be able to call somebody, mm -hmm. to, you know what I mean? To be like, what do we need to do? So Yeah, Lyndon Johnson sound like a husband whose wife is angry. <laughs> <laughs> I got you the ring. <laughs> I got you the necklace. But, what more can that, I do? But isn't, is that not what you are when you're in that position, though? Yeah. You're married to the game. To the game, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we, they, they work for us. We forget that. I never forgot that shit. <laughs> I never forgot that shit. They, I never forgot that shit. They work for shit. us, so yes. You know should. anything about working for me? I want you to work hard. That's right. So, <laughs> you, so, you, so you should be making demands. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, even, even with, uh, it, it, it was interesting when Obama did the whole defund the police thing because same thing with narratives, right? People have a narrative about you. Mm -hmm. So the narrative is Barack Obama don't really give a fuck about black people. Mm -hmm. He don't really relate to being black, yada, yada, yada. So of course he doesn't understand our play. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the whole four, four minutes, 50 seconds, he absolutely understands what the why of defunding the police is, the concept. Yeah, he's, he's just, just talking telling about the branding. From yeah. a politician perspective, this bad. shit ain't gonna work, it's bro. Bad. It's bad. The yeah. only person I've ever seen answer that question perfectly was Kamala Harris. Yeah. They asked Kamala Harris about defunding the police. She broke down why resources need to be taken away from police and allocated to the community, yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. And Megan McCain was like, I totally agree with you. Yeah. But do you believe in defunding the police? And, Megan, and Kamala goes, I just define, yeah, yeah, define defund the police. What do you what do you mean? Defi define what do you mean by defund the police? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you something else. Conservatives, Republicans, I was looking this up. Donald Trump defunded like 66 programs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Probably more now, but I, the, the article I was reading at the time, it was 66, right? When they defund, they actually abolish. So defund for them really means abolish. That's why they bucked back the way that they did. 
When they heard them say defund the police, they were like, we're not getting rid of police. Ah, because whenever they cut budgets, that's what they don't even, they call it cutting budgets. Mm. Whenever they cut budgets mm-hmm. or they take money away from something, they're doing that because they know the, prob- the, 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 the program can't exist without that funding. Mm. So eventually the program goes away. Yeah, that's interesting. So defunding for them actually means abolish. So, it's so when they so hear bad, defund yeah. the police, they're like, we are not getting rid of the police. Y'all are motherfucking tripping. All the politicians should do is focus on the why. When guys like Barack Obama are on TV and somebody brings up the funding the police, don't even listen. Break down why the defunding the police should happen without saying the fund the police. Talk about how we need to allocate resources from police officers to reinvest in our communities. Like just just say that. Yes, we need to reinvest in our in in in, in our communities. You know what I mean? Keep it on the why. Yeah. When you I keep agree. it on the why, nobody can disagree with it. I haven't heard one person disagree with the why. And if they disagree with the why, they're probably fucking racist. Because there's no way you could tell somebody we should not reinvest into these communities. Yeah. We should not provide more opportunity. We should provide job training programs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We should provide better mental health care services for people. We should provide better health care. We should provide better schools. Nobody is going to disagree, disagree with, that. with that. Yeah. So why don't you, I mean, if you were smart branding wise, not you, but the people that are in control of these groups, they would change the branding from something that most people disagree with to something that most people agree with. Well, no, I, I think I think it worked for them. And I'll tell you why it worked for them because it keeps the conversation going. It does, but it works in the same way that like uh, tweeting something woke works is that like there's a lot of people who will support your thing, mm-hmm. right? So you're like tapping into that highway like we were talking before. But when it actually starts to get to the point where you have to execute that thing, if you change any part of it, anybody who disagrees, any none of those people that got your support are going to be okay with it landing in the middle. Yeah. Right? Because they are so extreme that they only want that one yeah. thing. When in the reality is if you start in the middle, the ascension is going to be way slower. Yeah. Right? Because less people are going to gravitate to it in the same way uh, that they would if you just hop on the highway. But the long-term effects of this is you actually get the thing done. It's it's really no different than like Barack Obama policy and uh, like Trump policy. Like it, it, oh, Trump, no, no, the Obamacare Affordable Care Act discussion. Yeah, so it's like like Trump, all the things, not all, but a lot of things that he did, he did through executive orders, yeah. right? And you don't need any politics to do that. You just sign it. The problem yeah. with executive orders is the next president comes in and he writes an executive order that your executive order Barack is Barack wrote more executive orders than Trump though. But uh, my point is that doesn't matter. Like Barack, when he put in... Uh, Obamacare, he implanted that in our political system. It is so interwoven that Trump still couldn't take down the whole thing, right? Because he actually used politics to get it done. And our system, it is very difficult to get things done. But when they're done, they're locked. And it's hard to get them unlocked. So the same thing with the movement. It's like if you start the movement in a place and you really tie and interweave, interweave, I guess I'm talking, interweave all these different sides and political factions into the support of it, it is going to be hard to tear that apart. But if you just get a little blip over here that's like, defund the police, I think Minnesota did it. And then all of a sudden Minnesota is having all this like stuff where they're having to bring out outside police forces to help them with crime that they're experiencing. I'm just saying like, if you overcorrect, if you have that immediate knee jerk reaction, you have that overcorrection, you're always going to come back. Yeah, I, I just like it because it gets the conversation started. But I just think that the people who actually can change the system yeah. have to know how to have the conversation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And 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 if if the if the activists on the ground are saying to fund the police, which is causing people on mainstream TV shows to ask these mainstream politicians about it, be like Senator Harris. Know how to yeah. answer the fucking question. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk about how resources do need to be reinvested into black and brown communities. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't don't get into a back and forth about the fucking slogan. Because no. you know what it sounds like? When you say things like, I don't agree with defund the police. You're talking about the slogan. People think you're talking about the actual why. Right. Oh, you don't agree with reinvesting in the, yeah. the black and brown communities? Like, that's a pointless fucking conversation. Yeah. Even call out the slogan. Like, they, you know what? The slogan is incredibly misleading. So if I say here, I agree with defunding the police, all the people who think they know what that means uh, are going to be like, how the fuck could you want to defund the police? This is what it means. And I agree with that. I yeah. just hate the name because it's so polarizing. And I want this to be something everybody supports. Please yeah. support this. Let's do some. Uh, Ask an idiot. Yeah. Can you make a relationship work if your family hates your partner? <laughs> um, can you make a relationship work if your family Hates your partner. Hmm. Yes. Oh, 
I'm sorry. I really just blacked out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I thought you was like, damn, thinking about your own relationship. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, you was, you was thinking, so how should I answer this? No, no, I just blacked out. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you love that person, you're married to her, you know, or yeah. they're married to you. And yeah, absolutely. That you person is married to your family? Exactly. I think it's in your family's best interest to like love that person and try to get on board. If you truly love them, they make you happy. That's right. Because I'm going to stop fucking with you. Exactly. This yeah. person is going to be like the mother of my children. That's right. And that's who I'm sleeping with every night. That's who I'm in love with. That's yeah. who I plan to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. Love your family, but y'all don't want to fuck with her. I ain't fucking with y'all. Well, they have that. a good reason, though. What's the good reason? Like, what if the man's like, you know, has an aggression problem? What if he beeps on her, yells at her, and all that stuff? Well, that's different. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, you yeah, ain't say on. that. You, you talking know about what I'm illegal saying? activity? Yeah, you didn't say that. You're asking, you're just asking saying, me questions. Y'all just saying you should, like, if, if you're like, yo, can you, what you should say, yo, can your family love your partner if your partner beats your ass every day? Yeah, no, no. Then we should get out of that. You shouldn't love that person. Well, We're just talking about like. He cheats and he just is a. Black men don't cheat. What are you talking about cheating? All right, I'm done with this. This is cheating shit. All right, so Who next cheats? one. Yeah, go to fast one. ass. <laughs> PM. You're going to forget that S, bro, and it's going to be World War II. You better stop. What I say? Fat ass? I you didn't say stop, that. I said fast ass. I, I said he's going to forget the S, and it's going to be World War III. I'm on your side. Yo, come on, girl. Really. Charlotte wants to be thick like me so bad. First of all, I'm thicker than you. So Yo, hold up. First of all, I'm thicker than you. Yo, You're I'm not, not going to lie. Charlotte, you kind of a fast young boy, bro. You know, like, <laughs> yo, you, you yo. fast young boy, Charlotte. Yeah, don't, don't make me stand tough. up, yo. I'm thicker than you, yo. hey. You just short. Hit that new Megan move. Hit that new Megan exactly. move. Nah, these jeans will pop. I ain't learned the new Megan move yet, but that shit she was doing, that shit is like, Do uh, what's that? Is that Dora that was doing that dance? Dora? Who's the cartoon meme that they always use? I don't know. No, Y'all know the shit. I'm talking about the girl with the glasses and the hair, and she's doing this oh, shit. I don't know her name. My name Man, Megan was doing that one. shit with her ass. Well, I don't remember that. That shit was wild. That last one where you squish I it like that. Done it. Don't do it. I've done it before. Nah, you no, ain't you never haven't. done that. that, that move. You ain't never done that. You never saw that before in your life. There's no. There's no you knows. cannot do that. You My cannot do that. Anyway, that's how you snatch off the rubbers right there. That move at that last little twist at the beginning, yo. That shit is All Star Weekend approved. <laughs> Since you got on black jeans and I got on black jeans, let's take a picture from the back and see who does it better. No, no. send it to your boyfriend. And say which one is me. <laughs> yo, that let's do that. That's fire. Who you're got? Gonna, you gonna who's get me? humbled today? No, you gonna get, you gonna get humbled <laughs> the fucking day. Let's Taylor. go. <laughs> this is so fun. All right, so you sit there. You are gonna get humbled today? Come on, let's do it. Okay, so <laughs> yo, honestly, honestly, don't make me get in there. <laughs> Shit, you know what I mean? I'm out here. I'm more of a long distance running kind of girl, but <laughs> so you definitely are more not, long distance. It's not definitely. that fast. <laughs> Ready? Uh, PM. Jeff wants to know what are some of your real life superpowers? Oh, real life wow. superpowers? Mm -hmm. Um, I think mine is patience. Mm. I have, I have, I have really good patience. Mm. Not just, I mean, not just even in life, but just with, in, yeah, in general, with people and everything. I got. I got patience. I might be a little too patient, actually. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong. I'll get my shit off and I'll vent. You know what I mean? But right. I'm very, I, I, I will vent several times about something before I either decide to confront it mm. um, or I might even come to the conclusion I don't want to even confront it at all. I deal just with it. Back away from it. So I think, I think for me, it's patience. Patience is a superpower. I think a lot of motherfuckers now get fucked up because of a lack of patience. That's mm -hmm. what we talking about now. Like, yep. even, like just running the social media with shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Just yep. running the Twitter with shit. Like, just be patient. Like, give yourself mm -hmm. a beat. Take a break. Take mm -hmm. a breath. Yeah, you know start playing the seeds. I, yeah, all you motherfuckers getting caught up in PPP loans. You weren't patient. Yeah. You'd have got to that million at, at one day. Yeah. Or that hundred thousand. You know what I'm saying? You'd have yeah. got to that one day if you just do, be patient. Yeah, do be the patient. work. Yeah, I would say for me, um, problem solving i i uh i actually i look forward to it i kind of flourish in those environments mm. you know like if there's some sort of chaos or some sort of problem or some sort of issue i think that i have uh an elite ability to like handle that issue and like work around it and find ways to get around it and that's really helped me in my career it's really helped me in life and i feel like when you welcome challenges and problems and you get excited by them, you start to feel like things work out for you. Yeah. But the reality is, is like you are 
not crumbling under the pressure of problems, you're using those problems to succeed on a different level. So for me, it's, it's yeah, it's like problem solving. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a great uh, great superpower. I, I want to live the. I want to learn to live without conflict. Mm. I'm so used to like thriving in conflict. <sighs> you love it. I, I don't know if I love it. You do just, it. You're gonna be the guy fighting in the old people home. I already know. <laughs> I already know. I already know you. I know you. Uh, no, I don't know why I gotta stop. I've always been like that. I like. I like. Um, I just got it. Something got to be going on. You know what I mean? But I'm at the point in my life where I don't want conflict. But it, mm -hmm. it's still always conflict. And some. And nowadays, it's not even me. It's just other people got so much shit going on in their mm -hmm. life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's family shit or friend shit, everybody always got mm -hmm. some shit going on. It's just now like the stakes are bigger. It's not like being in school. Where it's just yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. yo, pull the it's fire It's my reputation along. on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Now it's, no, but now it's real shit like, you know, dealing with people who got drug abuse problems. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Shit yeah. like that. So it's just like, it's, it is always some conflict going on. Mm -hmm. And you just at the point where like, man, I don't want this shit. Mm -hmm. But no, I take that back. The shit that you, that are, that's out of your control, mm -hmm. you got to deal with. Mm -hmm. But there's other conflict that you may just... Cause on yourself. Like, I just like, fuck it. Like, I'm fucking with, fucking with Nyla this morning for no reason. <laughs> yeah. What were you doing? For no reason. Just like, for no reason. We... I called him a nut ass bull. And then he was like, what do you say? And I said, went... I said, when you're from Philly and you call somebody that's name starts with N, nut ass, yeah. it hits different. It's like, nut ass Nick. Nut ass Nancy. Uh -huh. So I'm like, nut ass Nyla. So I'm like, oh shit, Taylor, let's just put in the group chat, nut ass Nyla. SMH, right? <laughs> For no reason. For no reason. Right? So she's freaking out. I haven't out. even figured out the whole plan. Yeah, I'm just like, this is So I put nut ass Nyla shaking my head. Taylor puts nut ass Nyla shaking my head. Taylor goes, I mean, Nyla's right. What the fuck are y'all talking about? What the hell is going on? I'm like, check Twitter. <laughs> 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 I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, check Twitter. So she calls me. I'm like, yo. Somebody leak your nudes on Twitter. Yo, no. you got some nudes or some shit on Twitter. Yo, they saying it's you. She's like, what? <laughs> right? so, so I'm like, yo, you need to go check. So I hang up the phone. So I just put it in the group chat. I'm like, yo, Nyla's nudes on Twitter, yo. And so she goes, send receipts. So this is the picture I see. Because I'm not lying, I right? I'm not lying. <laughs> Hold on. Hi, I'm not lying. Right there. This is the picture I see. <laughs> this is, that's Nyla not from lying. The Lion King, right? So, this, so, this, so she's naked, right? So I'm not lying. Nyla's nudes are on Twitter. Now, mind you, Nyla's like, I'm sitting here talking to my mom. I break out in a cold sweat. I got to get up and leave the table. She's like, she's like, my mom's like, oh, that's Charlotte. Let me talk to Charlotte. She's like, no, not right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, why did, I, why did I fuck with her like that? Why? You're bored. You be bored. What's the reason? Yeah, bro, you're fast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're fast. Give us one more. Let's get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy ass yes, dude, bro. Listen, every morning he says something. Uh, um, CLTPD wants to know if you could travel to any past decade, which would you travel to and why? The 90s and let them know what the fuck is coming, boy. Like this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm letting y'all know right now, all this classic shit y'all doing is amazing now. But in 20 years, they're going to get y'all the fuck out of here for this shit. Wait, hold on. All right? So, wait, wait. So, based on that one, then, <laughs> yeah. what do you fear most, or Dolo Spirits wants to know, what do you fear most about the pandemic life? Nothing. You don't fear anything? Nah. The pandemic has been great, honestly, even even through everything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change. No, I, I mean, you know, it's hard to say you wouldn't change things, but then that would be being selfish because you don't know why people made the decisions that they made. You know what I'm saying? So... Yes, I had two friends commit suicide this year. Mm. Jazz, my man Shaq. But who 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 am I, you know, to tell them what decision or choice mm -hmm. they made? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Do I agree with it? Of course not. Right. Do I wish it would have uh wouldn't have happened? Of course I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you can't be a person of faith. You can't believe it, be a person that believes in a higher power. And not take the so-called good with the so-called bad. When I I, I, I live I live that way. When I say that I don't believe in good or bad, I just believe in everything being part of the process. I truly mean that because mm. I've never seen anything be wasted. Mm. Like life is like a pig, bro. I don't eat mm. pork, but motherfuckers use every part of that shit for yeah, real. Like yeah. every single thing that has happened in your life ultimately serves a greater purpose. You may not even realize that shit till. 10 if, years from now, 20 years from now. If you make the decision to look at it that way. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that's a perception Man. value we were right there. talking about that uh, the other day, Charlamagne. What? The euphoria about death and everything and what. Like things yeah. are gonna, things are gonna happen, right? And they're gonna happen whether you think they're good or bad, right? Like death, whether that's good or bad depends on which side of the war you're on, right? If someone dies on the other side, you're like, I guess we're winning the war. If someone dies on your side, it's like, oh my god, it's a tragedy. So, but death is gonna happen. Perception is what we make of it, and I don't know. That's the thing. I guess even back to like the problem solving stuff is like, even with this, the even with the Netflix thing is like. I stopped being able to go on tour. This is what I do for a living. This is how I make money, provide for myself. I could literally go, all right, I guess I'm just going to wait until comedy comes back and chill. You pivot. Or I pivot. I find a new way where I could get something out of it. And then instead of hating the pandemic for ruining my life, I'll turn that moment into something that will take my life to the next level. And I think that. Ooh, stay on that for a second. Because think about it, right? Yeah. You probably had mad shows lined up. You're looking at your. Your calendar adding up how much money you missed. You're oh, like, yeah. fuck, some motherfuckers are wallowing self pity. Mm-hmm. You was like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna create. I'm just gonna create. That's what yep. creators do. That's what that's what Jazz, Jazz used to always say. That create something. Jazz yeah. used to say that shit so much. Whenever whenever it was something fucked up going on, anything, Bro. Jazz be like, yo, create something. Create Bro. something. Create where's, something. Where's that video out? This I said the the beginning of fucking the beginning of COVID. It's so crazy. This girl posted. But you it. created right. That's the thing, and now man. look at this. this that, I bet crazy. you that Netflix special. This is it, ready? You cannot change the situation, change the way that you react to it. This is it. the beginning okay? of Okay, shout out to Duval, man. He put that in my head. You can't change the situation. There's nothing we can do that's going to change it. If you get quarantined, you get quarantined. How are you going to use that fucking time? Create. Create, create, create. Put out some dope shit. You have the internet. They're not taking away your internet, not taking away your electricity, not taking away your food, not taking away your water. They're basically putting you in creative jail. And sometimes when you are forced right to create or you have absolutely nothing to do you get the most creative i have the my best ideas when i'm in the shower or when i'm on a plane with no internet i got no distraction i'm just sitting there right that's that's how i know that there's been no internet on a plane when we get off the plane and al has three ideas for me yeah right yeah. i was thinking why don't we do that that's what's gonna happen to you so we can look at, at this like some doomsday shit or we can look at this like oh my god i'm gonna create my masterpiece Create something, man. And in the, the ill part about what you created, I guarantee you that Netflix special probably paid you everything you lost in, not even lost, everything you didn't get in show money. We did all right. Hey. We did all right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it for the money, to be honest. It was just, it was a good opportunity. It was a great opportunity, man. Yeah. Create something, man. That's what Jazz Flights <clears> always <throat> say. Create something. And that's why even through this pandemic, I'm like, all right, um, I'm just going to set up everything for the next 10 years. That's literally how I'm looking at it. I'm yeah. a, all right, podcast network, mm-hmm. book imprint, mm-hmm. the, the vertical. Me and Kevin launched at Audible. Yeah, amazing. I'm gonna I'm, I'm sign on the Breakfast Club for the next five years because this is a platform, you know, that enables me to continue to, you know, in, empower other people. You know what I mean? It's something mm-hmm. that's bigger than me. Like this is a this is a people's yeah. platform. You know what I mean? I got my I had my dude Shaka on today, you know, uh, trying to get a kidney, trying to get a kidney transplant. Oh, you know shit. what I mean? Because he needs a kidney transplant, but I I know he's going to get it because. I've used radio for that before. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So it's just like, this is what I love to do. So I'm just setting up for the next decade. Mm. That's literally what I'm doing. I'm setting up for the next decade. Mm. Create something, man. Go build something, man. I love that. That's I it. I love that, man. That's it, Taylor gang. Take us out of here, Sharla. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're wrong, but we're going to let you uh, think you're right because you always got to appear dumber than your mark. Ooh. You play a sucker to catch a sucker. Got him. Have a blessed evening. Peace.